हेलो जय वॉरियर्स अ वेरी वेरी नाइस हॉलीडे टू यूज दिस वेरी प्रोडक्टली ऑल वॉरियर्स गेट रेडी फॉर द ऑसम क्रिसमस स्पेशल सेशंस फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू एंड दिस इज योर कैप्टन श्रेयस विश यू ऑल अ वेरी वेरी हैप्पी एंड मेरी क्रिसमस व्हाट अ टाइम व्हाट अ डे टू एक्चुअली सिट एंड स्टडी दिस इज द बेस्ट day that you should actually utilize especially if you are in 12th standard 11th and you know other students can probably enjoy this day but if you are in 12th or a dropper student this is a time where you actually buckle up you cover up all your backlogs and today i have a very important chapter for all of you where is it current electricity uh navamita ma'am i don't think she will be able to take the class today so i think she will shift and she will let you know when it's going to be so current electricity so now that we do not have the next class i'm going to extend this class we are going to have a big session so be prepared even if you feel hungry at 1 o'clock it's okay i'm going to be here i'm also going to feel hungry but i'm going to teach i want your support and your love i want your support and voice is glitching okay just one second just check it now check now check now check now hello everyone can you hear me just check it now check now check now check just is that fine now yes okay perfecto perfecto i think the voice should be clear now very good very good okay great so like i was saying current electricity will be a big marathon today we'll try to cover up as many concepts as possible so right from the current density current uh, parameters all those things till equivalent resistance equivalent uh, emfs powers then wheatstones and then voltmeter ammeter all these things we are trying to cover in this particular lecture tomorrow you have sequence series goc then you have a marathon this is going to be a predictor paper the most important session of this week is going to be this one the wednesday one 11 o'clock it's going to start it's going to be a mega mock test of the predicted questions of your upcoming examination chemical bonding current electricity capacitors and alternating current pyq so not just this but also capacitors and alternating current pyqs will be there here you have reaction mechanisms and sequence and series pyqs over here on friday saturday and sunday you might have some extra sessions will let you know stay tuned on the channel okay let's let's begin with the current electricity chapter this is your flash series so flash means it's like a crash but it is not very fast it's not very slow it's a medium paced lecture where we see the concepts which are very likely to come in a very crisp and detailed manner and also the questions on how to apply these concepts when these problems come okay and meanwhile i'll also give you the tips and tricks as and when we solve the problems okay nice to see all of you hello md safin hello pudune hello akula hello snabby good morning true vision merry christmas to all of you hello sai deeper hello uh, mani welcome welcome gautam raj nice to see all of you out here so i'm pretty sure you all enjoyed the modern physics class so let's begin with the next lecture my name is captain shreyas you can call me captain as well and please smash the like button before you begin that's your small guru dakshina before we start the lecture not just that hit the subscribe button as well as hit the bell icon and join the telegram group where you will get today's pdf okay so let's begin with the lecture let's begin with the lecture okay so join the telegram group it's there down in the description box now to start off with you know current and current density see if you have a wire or a conductor so this is a conductor in that you have the nucleus which is basically positively charged you have the nucleus of the atom which is positively charged these positive charges which are nothing but the nuclei they are at rest they are at rest it's the electrons 
which are orbiting these nuclei these electrons these electrons are basically mobile they are basically your charge charge carriers they are basically your charge carriers so when you do nothing these electrons will just keep on moving randomly but when you when you apply a battery's voltage then these electrons flow in a very peculiar direction so if i had to tell you about the motion of the electrons when there is nothing connected to it it will be something random like this this is the motion this is the motion of the electrons without without the cell but the moment but the moment in that conductor in that conductor let's say you connect a battery like this let's say you connect a battery like this this battery is emf or voltage is let's say v so there is some voltage difference which i apply so because of this this side will be at a high voltage this side will be at a low voltage can you guess where will the electric field be inside the conductor can you guess where will the electric field be inside the conductor electric field always travels from high voltage to low voltage so that means there will be electric field in this particular direction inside the conductor there will be electric field this side inside the current conductor high to low very good now just think about this if there is electric field there must be force on these electrons on these electrons which are mobile they are free right on any conductor conductor means they have free mobile electrons so because it is a negative charge the force will be on this side the force will be on this side so won't you see these electrons hitting colliding like this but they will slowly start going in this particular manner they will slowly start drifting this way i hope you can see the electrons start to drift the electrons the electrons drift the electrons drift opposite to the field opposite to the field opposite to the field so because the electrons begin to move this way because the electrons because the electrons begin to move this way what is the direction in which the positive charges are moving indirectly if negativeness goes this way it's like saying the positiveness has gone the other way if negativeness went this way the positiveness has gone that way and current is the flow of charges and the flow is assumed of a positive charge by convention for historical reasons so that's the reason why we say that the current direction will be exactly opposite so current current is the flow is the rate of flow flow of nothing but your charges rate of flow of your charges and whenever you take current you take the positive as the convention positive flow positive charge as the convention as the direction of the current i hope this is clear very very important concept how the field is how the charges are moving but how the current is all things are you know sometimes in same or in opposite direction so if i had to define current current which is i current which is basically i this current is nothing but rate of flow of charges that means it is dq by dt right it is nothing but dq by dt it is a scalar quantity it is a scalar quantity it has it has direction but doesn't obey but doesn't what doesn't it obey it doesn't obey vector algebra vector algebra that is the reason why it is a scalar it is not a vector it does not follow the laws of vector addition subtraction nothing so, but it has a direction and the direction is opposite to the flow of electrons 
flow of electrons or in the direction of positive charges in the direction of the positive charges flow okay so that is something which you should know and also the unit the unit is ampere which is coulombs per second you can also rearrange this equation you can also rearrange this equation and here you can write the total charge will be integral of current with respect to time even this equation is okay and even this equation is okay this is if you take the time over here current into time if you integrate you will get the total charge which has flown in the circuit i hope this is very very clear very good very good awesome awesome uh, famous influencers please keep all the other doubts later on we will focus on the current lecture right i want you to answer all the questions i want you to uh, go around the sub topic that we are discussing and the discussion should be around this topic so that everybody learns you know in a very effective manner or else it will uh, divulge okay now there is another term called as the current's density now whenever we say the term density density is always per unit area or per unit volume or per unit length here if when we say current density it means if you have a wire which carries some current let's say there is some current flowing in this wire there is some current flowing in this wire if you mark this particular area if you mark this particular area right over here this area over here and if you divide this particular current this particular current with this particular area what you get is the term called as the current density the current density current density is how much current is flowing per unit area of that cross section of that particular wire like you can see current is measured in amperes area is measured in meters square so that's why the unit that's why the unit of current density will be ampere per meter square ampere per meter square also very important to know current density is not a scalar even if current is a scalar current density is actually a vector it's actually a vector in the direction direction of the current current density is a vector whereas current is not a vector so over here if you notice the current is going this way therefore the current density must be this way now the symbol for current density usually is j is usually j so the current density vector will be in this particular direction keep this in mind so now you might be wondering how do i relate all of them because current is a scalar this is a vector is this equation even correct well this is okay if you write in terms of numerical values in certain cases but the actual equation which relates them is something slightly different you just take the area on the top you just take the area on the top multiplied with current density you get the current and then you write area in the vector form how many of you remember from gauss's law area can be treated as vector raise your hands how many of you remember this from gauss's law that area can be treated as vectors raise your hands so even if i take a slice of a conductor which is not you know vertical horizontal 90 degrees 0 degrees let's say you know this is that slice of that conductor this conductor continues like this then this particular area that we see over here has an area vector like this this is your area vector area vector area vector is always perpendicular to the surface which you consider is always perpendicular to the surface that you consider keep this in mind and maybe the current is actually going in this way so maybe if this is the current's direction so that's the exact same direction in which the current density will be that's the exact same direction in which the current density will be the true relationship between the variables is as follows you take current density vector 
do a dot product do a dot product with the area vector that will give you the current current is a scalar product current is a scalar product of current density and the area vector very good some of you remembered this and those of you did not know this i have explained from the basics area is a vector quantity you can treat it like a vector so for example if i take my mobile surface over here a nice iphone this would be my area vector this would be my area vector which is a perpendicular uh, quantity perpendicular line which i am showing perpendicular to the surface okay so that is the area vector keep this in mind very good very good so you need to also remember this particular formula now over here sometimes you might be asked to find the number of charges flowing per unit time and all of that so in those kind of scenarios what you can do is if current is known current is nothing but dq by dt now the charge which will flow the charge which will flow remember that or i can just write this as in simple terms the charge flowing per unit time the charge which will flow will be the number of charges into each charge why is this ne why is this ne think about it only electrons flow and each electron has e charge where where e is nothing but 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb e is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb yes or no so when you multiply this with n it's the number of total charge the total charge which is flowing in that time so this becomes a very important equation if you want to solve problems where number of charges flowing per unit time are asked n is the total charge and t is basically the time so let's start with some questions coming up on your screen get ready my warriors based on the theory that we have learned remember that's that's the best way to you know cover up the theory right now if i just teach you only theory and then start with problems you will be bored if i just do problems you will be scared that i don't know the theory so we learn a small concept and do them do some questions on it learn a small concept do some questions that way you will build up the confidence you will be understanding the theory also you will be applying the theory also you will be seeing how to do the problems the charge on an electron is this much how many electrons go in a, a tube which uh, you know uh, has a current of 16 milliamperes now even though it says cathode ray tube even if I write it as a conductor, it's the same thing. Electrons are flowing, electrons are flowing per unit time through some space, through some region. It could be gas, it could be liquid, it could be solid. Doesn't matter, it's flowing and we have to find the rate of flow. Uh, how is it related to the number of charges? I think we should use this formula, which is current, is basically charge by time. And charge is the number of charges into each charge by time. So therefore, the number of charge carriers per unit time will be, n by t will be, divide the current by E. Divide the current by E. What is the current? It is 16 milliampere. So 16 into 10 to the power minus 3. Divided by E value is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. How much does it come out to be, my dear warriors? Isn't this 16 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 16 into 10 to the power minus 20? 16, 16 cancels. This will become 10 to the power 17. How many of you wrote option A? Very good. Proud of all of you. Very good, Gautam Raj. Very good, MD Safin Azil. Astrimita, very good, Aftari. Very good, Advait. Very good, Vaishnavi. Very good, Alekya. Very good, SV. Awesome. Awesome, Aturi. Hello. Very good, Shivalingam. Let's go to the next one. There is a charged ring having a charge Q and radius R. It is rotated with some angular speed. How much current is generated by it? How much current is generated by it? This is a common question which is also used in magnetism. You have a charged ring like this. You have a charged ring like this. And you rotate it with some angular speed. If you rotate it with some angular speed, then what you do is you stand at any point and in one rotation, how much charge flows so in one rotation in one rotation how much how much charge 
flows. Just try to figure that out. How much charge flows in one rotation? Then you will get the answer for the current as well. That current will be the the current will be the charge which flows in one rotation upon the time. The charge which flows will be the entire charge on the ring. The entire charge on the ring which is basically Q. How much will this time be? This time will be the time for one rotation. And one rotation takes 2 pi by omega time. So it will be Q omega by 2 pi. Q omega by 2 pi. How many of you remember this formula from circular motion? Circular motion time period of rotation is 2 pi by omega and in one rotation Q charge all the charges have gone through this point. So how much time it took 2 pi by omega that's it you get the answer straightforward very good that's the answer. Okay let's have a next question if the charge flowing through a conductor is this then at what instant is the current zero charge is given. Question is when that is the time when your current is zero. Let's try to think if we can remember a particular formula. I think we remember a particular formula which is current is the derivative of charge with respect to time. So I just have to differentiate T cube minus 60 plus 5 that is the charge given derivative of T cube is 3T square. Derivative of minus 60 is minus 6. Derivative of a constant is 0. That is your current. So current is 3T square minus 6. But I don't want that. I want when is the current 0. So make this current as 0. So 0 is equal to 3T square minus 6. So 3T square is equal to 6. So T square is equal to 2. So T is equal to root 2. Where is root 2? A option? Very good. A for acing it. A for apple? No. A for acing this problem. Very good. Bhavya, very good. King Gaming, very good. Vaishnavi, Oxidosin, very good. MC Chefin, Vision Media, awesomeness. Moving on to the next one. If the current density is 3i plus 4j, 3i plus 4j, very good question. The cross section is this, then the current is. Very few people would have solved a vector problem on current density and I thought it is the best to do that because this can come in your J examination. Okay, so let's understand the diagram first without that we cannot proceed. The cross section is in the YZ plane. So let me just show a random YZ plane like this. This is let's say your Y axis. This is let's say your Z axis and this is let's say your X axis. Try to visualize this in three dimension. This is the cross section area all right which is 2 meter square this particular area. Okay the current is current density is 3i plus 4j. Current density is something 3i cap over here and 4j cap over here 4j cap over here. Now think when I write the formula of current is j vector dot a vector j vector dot a vector which component of j must I consider or should it be both? Well if you look at this area the area vector the area vector is right over here area vector is right over here and whenever you take dot product only the vectors which are in the same direction they will multiply but when they are perpendicular that's it the answer comes out to be zero j dot uh, sorry j dot a if i take this component of j right which is 4 j cap they are perpendicular cos 90 zero cos 90 zero mutually perpendicular vectors dot product is zero so basically i will say don't worry don't worry about this component. So only component that I should be worried about is the x component. So the current will be 3 into the area. How much is that area given? How much is that area given? Area was given to be 2 meter square but in the i cap direction. That's it. So 3 into 2. So current will be 6. 6 amperes option B IIT Bombay. 
How many of you wrote IIT Bombay? Wow. All the students over here who have written B. 100% seat booked. I'm just calling the IIT Bombay director to book your seats. Don't worry. I'll call up the IIT Bombay director very soon. Very good. You have 100% booked your seat over there. Okay. If you wrote something else, that is wrong. Moving on to the next question. A current through a wire depends on the time given by this function alpha naught beta some constant. How much charge goes through it in 15 seconds? How much charge goes through it in basically 15 seconds? Let's try to do this. Whenever charge flowing is asked, current is given, it generally will involve integration. Especially if it is a variable related problem. So the charge charge will be integral of current with respect to time in that time interval, whatever that time is. So therefore, Q will be, we have to integrate this. So alpha naught is a constant, throw it outside the integral into integral of T dt from 0, I think the time is 15, plus beta is a constant, throw it outside the integral 0 to 15 T square dt. I think I know the value of alpha naught. Alpha naught is 20. Okay, T's integral is T square by 2. T square by 2 from 0 to 15. Plus beta's value is 8. And T square's integral is T cube by 3 from 0 to 15. Correct? Let's see what happens next. So Q therefore will be 20 by 2 is 10. T square that means 15 square. 15 square minus 0 plus 8 by 3 as it is over here. This is 15 cube. So I'll write it as 15 into 225. 3 goes with 15 5 times. And if I may, I'll write 8 as 4 into 2. 4 into 2. 2 into 5 is basically 10. So I can take 10 common. And here I have 225 which is 15 square plus 225 into 4 is uh, basically 900. So this will be nothing but 1125 into 10, which is basically 11250. 11250, just check this out. Yes, it is. Yes. Option A again. Wow. What is happening? Very good, Azil. Very good, Alekhya. Hemant. Very good, Guta. Very good, Provision. Excellent, Samir. Excellent, Anuga. Master. King Gaming, very nice. That's the correct answer. So now I think you can confidently say you understood current and current density. This is how we build the confidence. Slowly and steadily. You cannot say, sir, in one hour can I master current electricity? No, obviously. We have to divide our time. We have to utilize our time in a very crisp and detailed manner and see how to apply the concepts. That's how the whole lecture will be. I hope you stay till the end. And if you have forgotten, to smash the like button, please do that right away right now. It's very important that you grow this channel because this is the only channel in the entire world, I would say, or other country who is making you prepare for JE and engineering entrance exams in English. So there are many challenges in Hindi. They receive a lot of support. So it's your time that you show your support and your love for this channel. Okay. Very good. Ohm's law. Let's talk about Ohm's law now. Now, as per Ohm, as per Ohm, if this is a voltage versus current graph across some device, this is some device, this is some device, you measure how much current is passing and you measure how much voltage is dropped across that device. That graph, that graph, usually comes out to be a straight line that means the voltage is directly proportional to the current such a device is called as a ohmic device ohmic device but there are certain devices whose graphs might be like this or could be like this these are basically non ohmic devices the voltage is not directly proportional to current it is some function of current or current is some function of voltage. Yep. Uh, capacitor and AC Anandu? No, this is an exclusive lecture of current electricity because that is a major chunk. 
if you want to watch my alternating current class or even capacitor it's already there on the channel you can watch that as well okay so please watch that capacitor is not high weightage maximum one question will come okay so that's how it is cool now when i say ohmic devices voltage is proportional to current those devices are like resistors non ohmic devices are like you can say even a inductor or even semiconductors uh, vacuum diodes these are all non ohmic devices so for ohmic devices for ohmic devices voltage since it is proportional to current v is equal to ir this is nothing but your resistance this is called as the resistance the unit of resistance is basically ohm and 1 ohm is basically 1 volt or i would say it is nothing but the volt and current is taken down so by ampere volt per ampere is nothing but ohms and we already know the symbol for that this is nothing but the symbol for this in our electrical circuits and obviously it is a scalar quantity it is a scalar quantity this is something which you should know now i can also tell you the resistance in terms of other quantities i can also tell you the resistance in terms of other quantities like if i take a conductor if i take a conductor of certain length l and certain area of cross section a this conductor is like a resistance of value r and that resistance is given by rho l divided by a rho l divided by a resistance is directly proportional to the length more the length more the resistance and also it is inversely proportional to area meaning if area increases then resistance decreases what is this rho this rho is basically this rho is basically called as the resistivity the resistivity of the material resistivity of the material resistivity of that material if the resistivity is high meaning it is very bad conductor if resistivity is low like for gold silver copper then it is a very good conductor okay so that's what resistivity tells us you can also get the unit of resistivity it is not that difficult this is ohm this is meter this is meter square meter meter square one meter cancels one meter is remaining here you bring that meter here ohm meter will be the unit so unit will be ohm meter ohm meter understand that not just that even this resistivity depends on the temperature something like this rho naught one plus alpha delta t this is basically your temperature dependence this is basically your temperature dependence temperature dependence what is rho naught rho naught is your resistivity which is there initially usually at 0 degree celsius alpha is called alpha is called as the coefficient of thermal resistance coefficient of thermal resistance thermal resistance and delta t is basically your change in the temperature how much did you change the temperature by does this formula remind you of some other formula if it creates some kind of a deja vu if it reminds you of something which you have studied before let me know where have you studied such a similar formula before yes gamers definitely that's the whole idea yep Bala Murugan, definitely you can crack second attempt, forget second attempt, we are here to crack the first attempt in the first go. So that second attempt can be just chumma practice or just score improvement uh, session and we can focus on advanced and other exams. I feel that easily, even if you start from zero, you can score about 93, 94, 95 percentile very easily. With some bit of effort, you can even reach 99 percentile. Yes, this was there in, yes, expansion of solids, very good. Yes, thermal expansion of solids. Very similar uh, expression. Tell me one thing, is alpha positive or negative? Is alpha positive or negative? Just tell me that also. Is alpha positive or negative? Alpha 
is basically positive positive for conductors is positive for conductors but it is negative for semiconductors for semiconductors keep this in mind very very important meaning when you increase the temperature resistance will increase for a conductor for a conductor why because the molecules will get agitated the electrons will also get thermal energy they will collide they will face a lot of resistance but in semiconductors it is negative meaning if temperature goes up the resistance comes down the reason for that is band gap and the uh, electrons jumping from the valence band to the conduction band becomes more frequent so more electrons are mobile in case of semiconductors don't worry about the reasons as of now but remember it is positive for conductors negative for semiconductors yes so a lot of people do not know this keep this in mind okay so all these are again very very important formulas for resistivity also a very important modification in this formula comes and you should know about that as well few people know about it the total volume the total volume of that conductor will be area of cross section into l therefore area of cross section will be volume by length so if you substitute it over here if you substitute it over here it will become rho l instead of area you put volume by length 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 goes on the top it will become rho l square by volume this is particularly used in the stretching problems i stretch something by so much then how much will the resistance change by usually people use rho l by a which will give you minus 1 marks you should realize whenever you stretch something the length will increase but area will reduce so if area reduces you have to change the denominator but if you don't want to do that substitute area in terms of length so that it will now be seen resistance is proportional to l square provided the volume is constant provided the volume is constant i hope this is very very clear i hope this is very very clear everybody very good awesome very nice chalo let's move on now to the next thing let's move on now to the uh, yeah i think we should be able to do the problems now oh one more thing before we go ahead is this formula if resistivity is rho do you know what is 1 by rho 1 by rho 1 by rho is basically called as conductivity conductivity 1 by rho is basically conductivity so if somebody has more resistance then it has less conductance if somebody has less resistance then they have more conductivity so understand that so it is exactly inversely proportional and one more thing which you should know 1 by resistance is called conductance conductance there are two different things conductivity and conductance resistivity is inverse is conductivity resistivity vt 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 that's how you remember it resistivity conductivity resistance ends conduct ends so one by resistance is conductance look at the ending part yes so many people always confuse over here so keep these things in mind let's start with some questions there is a wire which has 50 cm length 1 mm cross section carries 4 amperes of current when connected to 2 volt battery the resistivity of the wire resistivity is asked so length is given area is given resistivity is asked that means i need to know the resistance to find the resistance current is given voltage is given i think we need ohm's law so using ohm's law v is equal to ir v is i i is 4 into r so r is basically 1 by 2 ohms so once i get this let me use the resistance formula resistance is rho l by a resistance is half resistivity i don't know length is 50 cm which is half a meter area is 1 mm square so it is 10 to the power minus 6 meter square half half cancels this goes on the top 
resistivity is 10 to the power minus 6. 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter. Is it IIT Delhi? Is it IIT Delhi? No, it's not A. Be careful. Yes, Shivaji the Emperor. That's option D. Very good, Vaishnavi. Uh, no, it's not A. Be careful. Some of you missed that. I don't know why you wrote 10 to the power minus 7. Either you missed some calculation or you missed some number over here. Just check this out. Okay. Maybe you did a silly mistake while calculating. Avoid that. Whatever mistakes you make over here, if you make a mistake here, you might get minus 1 here. But that means in the exam, you have got plus 4. Because you have avoided that mistake. Now it will not leave your head. You will remember, oh, I did this mistake in Shreya Sir's class. Or I did this mistake in the mock test. Or I did this while solving this problem. So make mistakes. But not in the exam. Before the exam. Okay. Let's do the next one. The voltage and the current graph for a conductor for two different temperatures are shown. T1, T2. Very interesting question. Find the relation between T1, T2. Who is more? Who is less? Are they equal? Or maybe the information is not even sufficient. Let's see. Now, I know how voltage, uh, sorry, how resistance depends on the temperature. If I increase the temperature, the resistance also increase for a conductor. So this is a conductor. 100% if I increase the temperature, the resistance must go up. Now, if you look at this graph, voltage versus current. So for voltage versus current graph, what do you think is the slope of this graph right now? Because I can see two graphs with different slope. Slope will be voltage by current, y-axis by x-axis. Y-axis is voltage, x-axis is current. What is V? V is basically IR. So won't it be just the resistance? Interesting. So now think and tell me if some graph has more slope, that means it has more resistance. If it has more resistance, that means it has more temperature. Which graph out of these two has more slope? This one. This one has more slope. That means it has more resistance. That means it has higher temperature. So T1 is more than T2. That is option A. Such a simple logic. But you have to develop that logic. If you try to buy hard something, oh, oh, always it is more, always this is less. No. Always check this also. If this was current versus voltage, if this was current versus voltage, then can you tell me, my dear J warriors, what will the answer be? Just one small change. You should be alert. If this was not VI, it was current versus voltage, same question, same graph, same values. Then I don't think the answer will be A. Then I don't think the answer will be A. Yes, then the answer will be IIT Bombay. Then the answer will be IIT Bombay. Exactly inverse because the slope will be 1 by R. Slope will be I by V, which is 1 by R. 1 by R. So it will be exactly opposite. So you need to be very, very alert and do all these variations. Let's have a look at the next question. Uh, I think we had to do one more thing, one more concept. And that's why uh, that question is there. Just one second. Let me teach you this concept also. And then we will solve that question. Without that, you will not be able to solve. Remember, sometime back, I was telling you, if you have a conductor, if you have a conductor, then there must be some electric field inside the conductor. Electric field inside the conductor. The electrons might be moving this way. The electrons might be moving this way. The electrons might be moving this way. But the current will be in this direction, opposite to the flow of the electrons in the direction of the field. Right? Flow of the positive charges is considered as the current. Across them, you have some voltage. Across them, you have some voltage. And this whole thing has some resistance. This whole thing has some resistance. Okay? Because it has some area associated with it and all of that. So, by Ohm's law, by Ohm's law, can we say V is equal to I into R? Definitely. We can say that. But we know what is resistance. It is nothing but rho L divided by A. Very nice. Let me rearrange it. I'll write I by A. I take this A below I. I'll keep rho as it is. I bring that L below over here. What is voltage per unit length? 
volts per meter try to remember it it is nothing but field isn't it how many of you remember this yes so that is nothing but field so this is field what is i by a it is nothing but j what is rho rho only wow so e is j rho or rho j but usually you don't write it like this you can write it in vector form also e bar will be rho times of j bar look at it current if it is in that direction 100 percent our current density is also in the same direction notice how your electric field notice how your electric field vector is in the same direction as the current density vector so this becomes a very important equation again e is equal to rho j e is equal to rho j this gives you the value of the electric field responsible for the current flow inside the conductor keep this in mind very good awesome hello krutika pranav welcome aboard my dear students chalo let's move on to the question and i hope you are getting your friends your batchmates for this je preparation in this particular journey for your je mains first attempt okay get as many friends as as you can because these are the friends who are going to stay with you even in the college you don't want to go to the college alone and your friends are left behind you don't want to be left behind and your friends are going ahead you want to enjoy with your friends so you will have stories to tell you can probably be you know roommates or floor mates or hostel mates or branch mates or just just batch mates who knows so make sure your friends are here electric field in a wire is 20 units current density is 0.1 units then the conductivity is how much conductivity is how much that's the question let's try to solve this question come on my dear students figure this bit out figure this bit out how much is the conductivity okay let's try to think hmm electric field is 20 current density is 0.1 using e is equal to rho j i'll get 20 is equal to rho into 0.1 so rho is basically 200 but i don't want rho i want conductivity conductivity is 1 by resistivity so it is 1 by 200 1 by 200 is there in IIT Bombay so I'll mark B as the answer very good so this is the kind of questions you can expect in J mains especially with regards to current parameters let's go to the next oops I think already the answer is given okay since the answer is already given I would like you guys to solve this as homework please solve this as homework okay it's very similar to the graph question i believe this one which we solved over here it's very similar to that i remember i told you current versus voltage current versus voltage look at that so that graph is given here i think you can solve it as homework okay chalo let's go to the next question a wire of 1 ohm has a length of 1 meter it stretches till the length increases by 25 percent how much percentage change is there in resistance to the nearest integer type okay so so come on come on come on think about it yes uh, bala morgan i'll definitely let you guys know about any course if present for j for second attempt in the days to come just give me one two days i'll definitely let you know here it is stretched the moment it is stretched what should come in your mind Shreyas sir had told that there is another formula or a modified formula for resistance. And what was the formula that Shreyas sir gave? It was rho L square by V. Assuming volume is constant because area will go down. So resistance is indirectly proportional to the square of the length. So my dear students, if you talk initially, what was the condition? Resistance is R, length is L finally finally how much is the length 25 percent increase meaning it is l plus 25 percent is one fourth l by 4 which is 5 l by 4 because this l by 4 is 25 percent l by 4 is 25 percent so you have made it 5 l by 4 that's the new length that's the new length my dear students so what is the new resistance what is the new resistance it will be Oh, it will not be 5 times, but it will be 
फाइव स्क्वायर बाय फोर स्क्वायर टाइम्स और अदर फाइव बाय फोर स्क्वायर टाइम्स ऑफ आर करेक्ट लेंथ स्क्वायर इफ इट मेक्स डबल रेजिस्टेंस विल बी फोर टाइम्स इफ इट मेड ट्रिबल देन इट विल बी मेड नाइन टाइम्स इफ इट इज मेड फाइव बाय फोर टाइम्स फाइव बाय फोर स्क्वायर टाइम्स स्क्वायर प्रोपोर्शनैलिटी स्क्वायर प्रोपोर्शनैलिटी That's it. Now just find the percentage change, my dear students. You will get it. So percentage change will be final minus initial. So five by four whole square R minus initial upon initial into hundred. R R R goes so one twenty five. Sorry, my bad. Twenty five divided by sixteen minus one into hundred. That's what it is. So it will be nine by sixteen into hundred. How much is nine by sixteen? I think it will be close to point five six. So multiply by hundred, you will get it as fifty six percent. Very good. So this will approximately come close to fifty six percent. Very good. I can see C for Captain Shreyas trending over there. Very good. Very good. Very good. C for Captain Shreyas. That's the spam in the chat box. Very good. Keep it up. and you guys got it now let's go to the next concept see how well you are understanding how well you are able to apply at least see me apply and then getting that confidence that is very important in this class okay keep smashing the like button even if you are joined right now subscribe to the channel don't forget to subscribe else you will miss out on this entire flash power pyq and the marathon series drift speed mobility field conductivity and so much more all these things all the parameters now okay so these are the remaining parameters uh, sometimes some questions do come from these things as well we will definitely have a look at it remember some time back i was telling you if you have a conductor and current is flowing in it like this the electrons will go in the opposite direction like this the speed with which they drift the speed with which these electrons go that is called as your drift velocity that is called as your drift velocity and to know or remember that formula i have a very easy and simple trick some of you who are my old students might know this already and to know that formula you need to know one more term in one unit volume if you take one unit volume of that conductor this is unit volume of the conductor in that how many electrons are free uh, and who are carrying that charge which makes up that current how many electrons who are free who are carrying that you know charge are making up that current so you have an important term called as n which is the number of number of charge number of charge carriers number of charge carriers divided by the volume divided by the volume so this is a term which is usually given to you in the examination or might be given to you in indirect form 100% so this is something which is characteristic of the material for copper it will be different for gold it will be different for aluminium it will be different so it is a materialistic property it does not depend on how much length area volume etc you take it's a materialistic property yes so now my dear students the formula for remembering the drift speed is current how many of you like gaming i already saw somebody who had gaming in their name itself nvidia graphics card very good true vision media graphics card company says gautam raj nvidia if you don't know about it please search nvidia it's a very famous graphics card company and many of you want to be computer science or electronics engineers you will soon have campus placements and nvidia will be coming over there maybe and maybe they will be offering you nice packages too so very famous graphics card company correct so we are just going to use that so n n is there right over here vidia vd E A, just go with the pronunciation. Nvidia, Nvidia. Current is Nvidia. That's it. That's very easy to remember this particular formula. 
वेरी गुड माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑसमनेस अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला रिगार्डिंग ड्रिफ्ट स्पीड ड्रिफ्ट स्पीड इज एल इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज इन टू द फील्ड डिवाइडेड बाई द मास इन टू टी ना वॉट इज दिस दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कीप कोलाइडिंग विद ईच अदर दे कोलाइड विद ईच अदर समटाइम्स वेरी क्विक समटाइम्स आराम से कूलली स्लोली समटाइम्स रियली फास्ट सो देर इज सम गैप बिटवीन द कोलिजन्स वेन दे कोलाइड लाइक ओ माई गॉड आई कोलाइडेड दे रिलैक्स फॉर सम टाइम बिफोर दे कोलाइड अगेन सो देर इज अ गैप बिटवीन ईच सक्सेसिव कोलिजन दैट इज दिस टाउ विच इज नन अदर दैन योर रिलैक्सेशन टाइम रिलैक्सेशन टाइम दिस एम इज मास ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन दिस इज द मास ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला वेरी इजी टू रिमेंबर ऑल्सो रिमेंबर काइनामेटिक इक्वेशन वी इज यू प्लस एटी वी इज यू प्लस एटी माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो मेक इनिशियल वेलॉसिटी एज जीरो मेक इनिशियल वेलॉसिटी एज जीरो एक्सेलरेशन इज फोर्स बाय मास फोर्स इज फील्ड इन टू चार्ज सो दैट डिवाइडेड बाय द मास so very easy to remember this formula as well i'm blocking this very very important formula cool charge into field by mass into the relaxation time correct another important formula which you must know another important formula which you must know is mobility 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 of the charge carriers is how fast are the charge carriers the speed of the carriers the speed of the carriers divided by the reason for them to move what is the reason field or the potential difference right so here you have the field the field inside the conductor the field inside the conductor so mobility the symbol for the mobility is mu and speed is drift speed field is nothing but e over here so that is your mobility formula that is your mobility formula keep these things in mind you can also see the unit of the mobility you can also see the unit of mobility this is meters per second meters per second field is volts per meter it is volts per meter so you can see what happens over here meter meter goes on the top meter square per volt second meter square per volt second will be the unit of mobility will be the unit of mobility so what in all terms did we learn i is graphics card company nvidia drift speed kinematic equation force by mass which is acceleration into time that's the second formula n is how many charges are there per unit volume inside the conductor which is a materialistic property how mobile they are that means how fast they are moving upon how much field you need to give them to make them move so vd by e is the mobility formula very good so let's start with some questions which were asked and which are very important to apply these concepts there is some current which exists in a wire of some value with the drift speed how many free electrons are there in each cubic meter of the wire that means they are asking you n that means they are asking you n okay so let's see is there any formula for doing this question i feel the best formula will be current is equal to nvdr current will be equal to nvdr therefore n will be current by drift speed into e into the area i think that will be the easiest way so therefore n will be so therefore n will be current current value is 10 divided by drift speed value is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 very good e value that's a standard thing 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 and area how much is area 5 mm square mm converted into meter it will be 10 to the power minus 4 tend to the power minus 4 meter square now do the math i think you will get the answer most of the things might look like cancelling 2 into 5 is 10 this cancels over here so i think you should get the answer now how much is 
n coming out to be how much is n coming out to be just come on check this out i think it will be 6 to 5 because i don't see 2 coming do you remember my trick of uh, you know ignoring powers of 10 you can see if you ignore the powers of 10 10 10 1 by 1.6 comes 1 by 1.6 won't be 2 won't be 2 won't be 1 also it can be this so 100% it will be option B only 6 to 5 into 10 to the power 25. Just do the math. You will get this as option B. How many of you use this technique? This is like avoiding the calculations. Avoiding the calculations, you can save up to one minute at least. You can save one minute. Unnecessarily calculations if you are going to do, it's going to take a lot of time. I ignored the powers of 10. Forget 10 to the power minus 3, 10 to the power minus 19, 10 to the power minus 4. Only 1 by 1.6. 1 by 1.6, okay, even if there are some decimals, forget that 1.6 also, for, forget that decimal also. 1 by 16 won't be 2, won't be 2, won't be 1 also, it has to be some other number, correct. So if you remembered that trick, very good. Those of you are new to the channel, that's why you should subscribe. You will get to know all these tricks. That's what this session is all about, saving time. Right now, I am here with only one purpose. I am here with only one and only one purpose and that is to maximize your score in the first attempt. If you are a zero, to make you a hero. If you are a hero, make you a superhero. That's very, very important to maximize your score. Okay? And if you score marks, that's where your percentile increases, that's where your ranks increases. That's where your chances of getting a good college increases. One, one question will decide whether you go in this city or that city. One wrong question will decide whether you get computer science or electronics or mechanical. Because there are many students this year who are competing against each other. Keep that in mind. Next, a charged particle having certain drift speed in some electric field has a mobility of how much? I think this is a direct question and this direct questions have come in 2022, 2023 also. You open the papers and you will be surprised. Direct questions, direct questions, VD by E. What is the drift speed? It is nothing but 7.5, 10 to the power minus 4. Divided by, what's the electric field? 3 into 10 to the power minus 10. 7.5 divided by 3 is nothing but, is nothing but 2.5, is nothing but 2.5. Great into 10 to the power 6. Is that option there? IIT Delhi is there in the option. So many IIT Delhi students. Which all directors should I call now? IIT Bombay also I should call. IIT Delhi also I should call. I should book all your seats everywhere. Very good. IIT Delhi. Awesome. That's the correct answer. Alright. If the relaxation time is doubled and the electric field is halved in a conductor, then the mobility will what in the mobility will what what will happen to the mobility let's try to remember any formula for mobility mobility is mobility is drift speed by electric field drift speed by electric field is drift speed related to the relaxation time yes e e t by m that was the formula and this e will come over here best part E cancels. So E T by M. E T by M is mobility. So basically just like electric field got cancelled, this has no role to play. This has no role to play. The only thing that you should be worried about is the relaxation time is doubled. So if this is made two times, 100%, the mobility will also be made two times. So if relaxation time is doubled, so even the mobility will be made two times, many of you would have said it is four times. If this was an integer type of question, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or whatever, decimal, or even objective, you would have got negative or maybe zero marks. So be careful. E got cancelled here. Many people fail to see that. So now this is an eye-opener problem. Sometimes some things might be given, but not even needed. Maybe they get cancelled. Maybe they are useless. So this was one such problem. Got it? How many of you realized your mistakes? 
Awesomeness, awesomeness. Shall we now go to electrical power, electrical energy, my dear students? Electrical power, electrical energy, my dear students. Okay, let's go to that. If I have a resistance and I pass in some current and I measure the voltage to be V, then the power loss, then the power loss in the resistor in the resistor P is given by either you use V square by R or you use I squared R or you use voltage into current. All the three formulas are one and the same thing depending on what is given, what is not given, what you know, what you don't know. Something is constant, something is not constant. Maybe voltage is constant so resistance will change and then power will change or maybe current is constant then you have to find that out. So depends on what is constant. So many students ask me, sir, is power inversely proportional to resistance or directly proportional to resistance? Answer is it depends. What are you taking as constant? Keep that in mind. Another important formula which some students fail to see that in some books or maybe it is not given only in some books is this one. Some people don't learn this. This is if you have a battery and let's say there is some current coming out of it. There is some current coming out of it. So depending on the direction of the current, if the current is coming out of it like this, if the current is coming out of it like this, then the power supplied, then the power supplied by the cell, that power is nothing but voltage into current. Voltage is E, voltage is E, current is basically I. But by chance, if the current's direction is like this, by chance if the current's direction is like this, then power is not supplied, the battery is getting charged. So the power, power consumed, consumed by the cell, by the cell to charge itself, by the cell to charge itself is also again E into I. This is something which is coming out, this is something which is going in the cell. This is going in the cell, this is supplied by the cell. Notice the difference in the wordings. Notice the difference in the wordings of the problem. Is that clear? Everybody? Next important formulas which you should know. Next important formulas which you must know. If you have, if you have a bulb, if you have a bulb, a bulb is usually usually rated at a fixed voltage usually rated as a fixed voltage and a bulb can be converted can be converted for many problems into a simple resistor that's it so say for example say for example i tell you this is a 100 watt bulb rated rated at 200 volts rated at 200 volts you know what does it mean it means that bulb which is there that bulb which is there which is 100 watt bulb if i calculate the power using v square by r formula power is 100 voltage is 200 so square it divided by the resistance so therefore resistance will be 200 square is 4000 divided by this 100 0000, 0, 0 cancels so resistance is 400 ohms so it will just behave like a 400 ohm resistance it will just behave like a normal 400 ohm resistance now you solve the problem just like a resistors in series parallel combination whatever it is like a normal resistor problem so this is actually a trick can be converted into a resistance is actually a trick to solve the bulb problems is actually a trick to solve the bul bulb problems keep this in mind yes you can otherwise you can rearrange the old terms and get as many number of formulas as you want you can put drift speed formula 
you can uh, write it in terms of current you can write it in terms of number of carriers per unit volume all those variations you can do by mixing and matching those formulas but you can't remember all of them so you remember few of them and then mix and match those formulas so a bulb problem can be converted into a resistance problem that's the key takeaway so say for example the same bulb so for example the same the same 100 watt you know 200 volt bulb is connected is now connected to example 400 volts then what do you think will the power of the bulb be then what do you think the power of the bulb be remember when you change the voltage of this bulb then what doesn't change is the resistance resistance is still the same therefore using power is equal to v square by r formula because resistance is same can i not say power is directly proportional to the voltage can i then not say p2 by p1 is v2 by v1 whole square whole square correct everybody with me so therefore the p2 by p1 what is the initial power 100 will be v2 by v1 which is 400 by 200 whole square 400 by 200 is 2 2 square is basically 4 so therefore p2 will be basically 400 watts yes everybody with me on this everybody with me on this understood how to solve these kind of questions so bulb questions treat them like resistors and when you change the external voltage resistance why will it change so resistance will be constant and accordingly then solve the problem sometimes this trick will always help you okay i'll give you some special formulas if you have two bulbs if you have two bulbs like this this is consuming p1 power p2 power so p1 and p2 are the rated powers at the same voltage v then then the total power in series then the total power in series for that same voltage for that same voltage which is basically v that ps what will you do it's exactly opposite formula of resistors so it is 1 by ps is 1 by p1 plus 1 by p2 it's exactly opposite formula it's exactly opposite formula to that of series and by chance by chance if those bulbs are in parallel if those bulbs are in parallel across that voltage and p1 and p2 are still the rated powers this is still there then 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 the total power then the total power in parallel then the total power in parallel pp is just p1 plus p2 exactly opposite of resistors in parallel you add in series you use reciprocal something like capacitors something like capacitors is this going to save your time yes or no thank you md safin yes if you loved this trick let's put a hashtag wpwp all the warrior pandus put the hashtag wpwp even if you're watching it recorded put it up in the comment section yes so this is a very important trick which you can use another interesting thing about power which i will be telling you right away right now is if you take if you take a battery if you take a battery and there is some internal resistance what is this this is some internal resistance you connect it to some external circuit load this is some external load which is there then there will be 100 percent some current passing through it and there will be obviously some power which is getting lost so there will be definitely some power loss in that uh, particular load so you have a property or a theorem which says the maximum maximum power 
is lost across across the load a load if if the external resistance is equal to internal resistance very simple rule this is called as your max power transfer theorem max power transfer theorem keep this in mind when external resistance is equal to the internal resistance then you will see that maximum power is delivered across the external resistance all these things one more thing over here which i can tell you okay uh, heat formula is also there which i can tell you right over here the heat which is uh, created by the current which is passing in the resistance that heat q will be power into time so sometimes you can also write it as i squared r into t okay so that is the heat which is being created or generated by the current which is passing in the resistor keep this in mind simple thing because uh, power is joules per second so joules per second into the number of seconds will give you the heat which is generated all right let's start with some questions i believe coming up on your screen here it is first question a hot electric ion has some resistance of 80 ohms and it is used on a 200 volt source the electrical energy spent if it is used for 2 hours will be how much that is the question let's see resistance is given voltage is given time is given energy spent is asked okay so power is v square by r the energy spent the energy spent e the energy spent the energy spent will be nothing but the power multiplied by the time power multiplied by the time so it will be v square by r into the time correct v square by r into the time so what is v v is basically 200 square by by 80 this will be in watts this will be in watts multiplied by the time what is the time two hours two hours okay let's do the math 200 square 400 one more zero one more zero 80 over here this is into two so this is what are this is what are come on guys this is just going to be thousand watt r thousand watt r that's it is it option c for captain shreyas yes it is yes c for captain shreyas yes very good very good keep it up moving on to the next question coming up on your screen this is another beautiful question if the cell has some internal resistance of 1.5 ohm the value of this r for which maximum power is going to be delivered across the combination of the load across the combination of the load potentiometer is deleted <laughs> don't study that now yes so treat this as one single load treat this as one single load yep my dear warriors and if it is told to you that already there is some internal resistance of 1.5 ohms so use our use our maximum power transfer theorem according to that theorem this internal resistance should be equal to the load resistance so internal resistance is 1.5 which is going to be the load resistance the load resistance now i have a technique 1.5 is 3 by 2 load resistance i can do one thing i can do one thing to find that out i can do one thing to find that out 1.5 is 3 by 2 1 by r load 1 by r load reciprocal will be 2 by 3 and 1 by r because they are in parallel you add the reciprocals so 1 by r plus 1 by 2 is 2 by 3 everybody with me on this everybody with me on this perfect just rearrange the terms and see what do you get so 1 by r will be 2 by 3 minus 1 by 2 so 1 by r will be nothing but lcm is 6 so 3 into 2 you are doing so 2 into 2 which is 4 minus you are doing into 
have we done some mistake have we done some mistake let's check this out 6 cfs into 2 and 3 oh sorry yeah it was correct only yeah fine so this is just 1 by 6 so therefore r is basically 6 ohms correct r is basically 6 ohms correct yeah very good muran very good vaishnavi very good true vision manasa sv alekya aql bdian very good yes awesome awesome very good so that was your power concept and i have told you everything which is related okay now let's go to the next important concept and that is combination of resistors let's do that okay very very interesting uh, concept believe me in j mains at least they don't give you very complex questions like you have some very complex circuit and then you have to find the equivalent resistance you open up any paper last five ten years they are very straightforward and there are certain situations cases patterns of questions which you should look at if you look at those patterns you are done sorted for j mains and even for bitsat and even for cuat so what are those patterns let's have a look at it starting off with resistor combination we will see first the series combination then we will see the parallel combination then we will see the disguised form then we'll see the disguised form you should know then you should see the infinite ladder form then you should see the infinite ladder form how many of you have forgotten that okay just check it out all right shreya which part you did not understand please let me know i'll definitely help you out with that but if you watch the replay of this particular question i'm pretty sure you'll understand it all i have done is this resistance should be this resistance because of maximum power transfer theorem this one which i just told you over here and all i have done is all i have done is this resistance is a combination of two resistances in parallel so this is actually a parallel combination so i take the reciprocal and that reciprocal will be 1 by r plus 1 by 2 that is 2 by 3 that is 2 by 3 which is a reciprocal of 1.5 now you just solve this you get the answer you just solve this and you get the answer that's all then you have basically symmetry symmetry uh, and connection removal problems and connection uh, removal problems and then you have Wheatstone's problem Wheatstone and extended problems these patterns if you do you are sorted apart from that you have Kirchhoff's voltage law and KCL related problems okay Kirchhoff's voltage law and KCL related resistor combination problems if you do that trust me guys you won't face any difficulty in your entire J means so let's start with each one of them and let's see some examples and then you know go to the next part everybody ready for me okay yes yes let's do that yes awesome 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 let's do it okay starting off with series this is one of the easiest one so if you have resistors connected one after the other right from r1 to rn then you can write it as one single resistor in series which is basically r1 plus r2 plus rn same current will flow in all of them same current in all of the resistors not just that the total voltage will be voltage across one plus voltage across two like that till voltage across n and more specifically if you want to find in a combination of series resistances let's say you want to find what is the voltage voltage across the third resistor then what you do is then what you do is my dear students you write resistance number three over here if you want to find v3 write resistance of that particular value 
and divide it with the total resistance. So R1 plus R2 plus whatever Rn and then multiplied by the total voltage multiplied by the total voltage. So say for example another example you want to find V11 uh, uh, or V15 V15 will be R15 divided by the total resistance so R1 plus R2 plus whatever Rn and multiplied by the total voltage that's all that's the simple way of remembering voltages across any resistor in series these things are generally not given in many coachings or books so please remember these it is useful for solving some good level questions this formula you learn it in 10th standard only there is nothing great over here next important thing in parallel in parallel so this is your resistance 1 2 3 4 5 like that till n there are many resistors like this over here okay coming like this till rn you write it down as one single resistance rp so in parallel 1 by rp is 1 by r1 plus dot 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 till 1 by rn keep this in mind this is for parallel you will see all of them have the same voltage all of them have the same voltage difference but they have different currents and i can say i is equal to i1 plus i2 like that till in i1 plus i2 plus i3 like that till in now in a specific case like this in a specific case let's say like this okay where where say for example you know 10 amperes of current is coming over here let's say this is 2 ohms this is 3 ohms i have seen many people saying current goes in the path of least resistance that is actually wrong how can current go only in the path of least resistance because if 10 amperes if 10 amperes of current is coming in 2 ohms is here, 3 ohms is here, 2 is less. So all the current should go to true. No, that is not correct. So current, or rather I would say, more current, more current flows, flows in less resistance. More current flows in res resistance. That is more correct or appropriate statement. Isn't that right? How can we say all current flows through lesser resistance? Some will flow here, some will flow here. Do you want to know within 10 seconds how to calculate it? Or else you will write equations. Many students end up writing equations and then they get it. Yes, with equations you might get it in 40 seconds or 50 seconds. But do you want to know within 10 seconds how to get to know this? Within 10 seconds how to get to know this? Remember the trick is, the trick is, current is inversely proportional to the resistance if you know that because voltage is same current will be inversely proportional to the resistance so what is the ratio of the resistance what is the ratio of the resistance check this out isn't it 2 is to 3 so what will be the ratio of the current what will be the ratio of the current it will be 3 is to 2 so divide 10 into 3 is to 2 divide 10 into 3 is to 2 so if you take 10 i think you will make five parts i think you will make five parts 3 plus 2 3 plus 2 is 5 so 2 2 2 2 1 2 3 4. i think i made six parts my bad 2 2 2 2 2 like that and this is 3 and this is 2 so this is 6 amperes and this is your remaining 4 amperes so 100% now i know that this branch will have 6 amperes more current and this branch will have slightly less current so 4 amperes that's how you can easily solve those questions everyone understood how to solve this very nice very nice let's move ahead to the next part see we have to do all these patterns of questions i will give you examples like i'm teaching you right now disguised form this is also very very commonly asked disguised form that means 
it doesn't look like an easy problem but it is actually easy disguise disguise means you put a mask when you remove that mask then you're like oh you are that so let's look at disguise questions disguise questions for disguise questions the trick is the trick is mark mark the potentials mark the potentials and remember for a wire for a wire all the potentials are same this is for a wire all the potentials are same if potential difference is same if potential difference is same then you will consider them in parallel and if current is same one after the other one after the other one after the other then you will consider them in series that is the trick to be used for uncovering the mask for removing the disguise and seeing what exactly the problem is i'll show you an example you will 100% relate to this you take this resistor take this resistor take this resistor and another resistor over here like this this is r1 this is r2 this is r3 this is r4 and here i connect this like this this like this and this like this this is point b this is point a and the question is find the total resistance between a and b find the total resistance between a and b how do we do that like i said start marking the potentials start marking the potentials see uh, if it's a wire all the potentials will be same parallel series separate conditions if this is a even this is a because it's a wire this is also a wire even this is a so i can call this also a i can call this also a correct if this is b even this is b because this is a wire even this is b look at that this is b even this is b and this also wire is connected over here so even this is b interesting now you know what is happening this resistor both sides have b b potential 5 volts 5 volts 7 volts 7 volts champa volts champa volts is there any voltage difference is there any voltage difference my dear warriors no voltage difference delta v is zero so it's a completely useless resistor so forget that so basically forget that resistor completely no use only waste fellow it is yep here if you notice here if you notice carefully r1 has a b voltage difference r2 also has a b voltage difference r3 also has a b voltage difference so r1 r2 r3 have a voltage difference of have a voltage difference of ab have a voltage difference of ab and when the voltage differences are same what are they in that means they are in parallel so the equivalent circuit will be you just show three resistors in parallel that's all three resistors in parallel so this is a sorry this is r1 this is r2 r3 r4 is not even to be worried about it's a useless resistor now you know how to solve it understood my dear students understood how to uncover the mask uncover the disguise many times this method of marking the potentials will help you now after uncovering the mask seeing the disguise problems let's go to infinite ladder and then symmetry problems of course wheatstones and kvl will also come in in a bit okay so let's go to the next part which is infinite ladder so infinite infinite ladder problems how to solve them you will find that there will be a repeating pattern there will be a repeating pattern there will be a repeating pattern whatever is repeating right whatever is repeating you consider it separately separately as one unit as one unit okay as a one unit 
द रिमेनिंग विच विल बी देर रिपीटिंग टक 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 इनफाइनाइट resistors will be there you will see that problem that will have the same resistance as with this one unit also with the one unit or without the one unit the remaining part will still have the same resistance because you need to remember one trick infinity plus 1 is infinity infinity minus 1 is infinity if you ask ambani please give me 1 rupee from his wealth if he gives 1 rupee will ambani be remain having ambani or no yes ambani will still remain ambani if you feel i am going to do a very good work and you donate 1 rupee to you know ambani then what will happen ambani will get 1 rupee do you think ambani will become very rich nothing it will still remain infinity so guys this is the same technique that we are using infinity plus 1 is infinity infinity minus 1 is also infinity understood oh clear oh so once you do that you can see that the remaining part remaining remaining part has same equivalent as before same equivalent as before let's have a look at a question so that you understand it say for example there is one resistor here there is one resistor here like this there is a resistor here there is a resistor here like this and this continues this pattern is continuous this pattern is basically continuous like this infinite terms are there let's say this is r this is 2r r 2r r 2r r 2r okay this pattern is continuously there infinite such things are there this is a infinite ladder kind of problem what do we do now what do we do now okay first identify the repeating pattern yes r 2r r 2r r 2r that is repeating consider only one unit consider only one unit so this is exactly one unit this is r this is 2r the total resistance of this entire combination can i assume it as x which i want to find can i assume it as x which i want to find everybody with me now think and tell me if i take away one unit forget this then this remaining part how much will be the equivalent resistance if i take away one part and just hide this just visualize and ask you what is the total resistance of this entire thing from infinity i took away one unit how much will be remaining infinity only yes or no infinity only will be remaining so same way if the equivalent resistance of this infinite ladder was x if i take out one unit then the remaining parts equivalent will still be x only so can i just put x over here can i just put x over here yes or no so it will not change equivalent resistance will not change now what are these two in what are these two in parallel right so these two are in parallel so might as well write it like this this is r and in parallel the equivalent resistance is r1 r2 upon r1 plus r2 now these two are in series these two are in series and when uh, they are in series their equivalent combination the resistance in series equivalent combination will be just addition so r plus 2r into x upon 2r plus x but wait a minute if i combine them what do i get i will get back the original equivalent resistance if i combine them i will get our original equivalent resistance yes or no so can i say this is actually equal to x only this is actually equal to x only that's it next step will be basically solve for x solve for x that's all just solve for x usually for infinite ladder questions you will see you will get a quadratic equation usually you will get a quadratic quadratic in x kind of equation you will get two roots you will get two roots 
the one which is positive you will obviously accept the one root which is going to be negative you are just going to ignore it because resistance can't be negative it has to be positive that's how you solve these questions is that clear my dear students understood give me a thumbs up if you understood give me a thumbs up Hasni saying yes capto anugna saying yes alekya yes yep everybody with me understood oh clear oh great chalo let's do some questions then we'll go to wheatstones and kvl and kcl also okay let's have a look three resistors having resistance r1 r2 r3 are connected as shown the ratio of the currents in terms of resistances used is how much ratio of the currents in terms of the resistance used is how much come on let's have a look first of all this is combined with these two who are in parallel in parallel we know in parallel in parallel delta v is same delta v for this guy is i2 r2 current into resistance is voltage delta v for this guy is i3 r3 let's do one thing let me write i2 by i3 will be r3 by r2 r3 by r2 now in the question i3 by i1 is asked i3 by i1 is asked i have found i2 by i3 i get a idea now i get an idea now and the idea is whatever current comes over here that gets distributed here and here correct whatever current comes over here that gets distributed here and here so why not apply componendo in this step and see what happens componendo is numerator plus the denominator numerator plus the denominator upon the denominator is numerator plus the denominator upon the denominator i2 plus i3 i2 plus i3 is actually the input current it is getting bifurcated it is getting spread over here so isn't this term over here actually speaking i1 so i got i1 by i3 as this by this but question says i3 by i1 so therefore how much will be i3 on the top with i1 it will be r2 is going to be on the top and r3 plus r2 will be in the denominator is such an option there definitely option b option b is there right over here such a simple question so componendo dividendo property is being used okay let's go to the next one let's go to the next one we are going to have a small break after completing combination of cell problems so hold on till combination of cells i know some of you are feeling hungry etc but please hold on till next some questions or concept after combination of cells problems are done we are going to take a small break okay for your lunch a circuit contains two resistances in series find the ratio of input voltage to voltage of r2 this is standard question i just gave it to you when you have two resistors or more resistors in series and you want to find the voltage across any such resistor let's say v2 what did i tell you write that resistance divided by total resistance multiplied by total voltage now this if you divide v2 by v will be r2 by r1 plus r2 this is voltage across resistance 2 this is your input voltage that is this particular number hence it is option b again uh input oh sorry it was oppositely asked it was asked in the reverse order so therefore v by v2 will be r1 plus r2 divided by r2 input voltage by voltage of 2 was asked yeah so that's why it is option b correct let's go to the next one coming up on your screen get ready get ready so if you made a mistake in the previous problem you find v2 by v then you will get the answer as a but if you read the question carefully input voltage to voltage of r2 is asked so v goes on the top v2 comes below if you mark this you'll get minus 1 you have to mark this okay let's move on two bulbs 40 and 60 watts 240 volts connected in series across 480 volts which bulb will work above the rated voltage 
which bulb will work above the rated voltage come on my dear students 40 watts and 60 watts both are rated at 240 volts okay now we know power is v square by r this voltage is fixed it is 240 volts 240 volts that means the one which has higher power will have lower resistance will have lower resistance so the one which has higher power who is it that is basically 60 watts has has lower resistance and 40 watts has higher higher resistance that's the first takeaway from the problem now let's go to the second part they are connected in series potential difference 480 so if you connect r1 and r2 across 480 volts who do you think who do you think will have more voltage difference who do you think will it be v1 or will it be v2 remember in series current is same it is i into r so the one which has more resistance will have will have more voltage and will be brighter so out of 60 and 40 who has more resistance 40 watts 40 watts so basically this 40 watts and if this is 60 watts this has more resistance so therefore v2 will be more than v1 so this will be more brighter this will be dimmer this will be dimmer so answer will be 40 watt bulb answer a imagine this was a tricky question many students think sir more power no sir so it will be brighter more power brighter no some people think sir both bulbs will work same time uh, same current same brightness because same current is flowing people forget the resistances only are different so same current might go but resistance is different so different voltage different power so be careful about it okay so you have to go by the, this logic beautiful tricky question especially in the exam you might get confused this is also a beautiful question where r1 is given r2 is given r3 is given r4 nay r2 is not given you have to find in fact the value of r2 if r4 is 5 volt okay let's do this my warriors i will do this in a very nice way very nice way r1 is how much 400 ohms uh, r2 i don't know r3 is 100 ohms r4 is 500 ohms okay r2 i don't know but r4's voltage is 5 volts okay observe now this much is basically 5 volts okay this much is basically 5 volts so now how much voltage will be there across 100 how much voltage will be there across 100 because same current will flow no same current will flow no correct yes or no so basically if current is going to be same current is voltage by resistance same current in series same current in series i is nothing but v by r so v3 by 100 will be 5 by 500 that means v3 will be nothing but 1 volt just check this out will it be 1 volt yes so across this how much voltage is there 1 volt is there so what is the total voltage across both of them 1 volt plus 5 volt which is 6 volt now since this and this are in parallel so can i say across this also there will be 6 volt only across this also there will be 6 volt because they are in parallel everybody with me understanding it everybody with me understanding it very good very good keep it up now this total voltage that you applied is 18 volts total voltage that you applied is 18 volts out of that some voltage is dropped here some voltage is dropped here across this entire thing six volts is dropped this entire thing can be written down as one single resistor across which six volts is dropped so how many voltages will be dropped across 400 how much voltage will be dropped across 400 come on my dear students from 18 six went off so 12 volts will be dropped here yes or no 
Everybody got it? How many of you wrote 12? How many of you wrote 12? Yes. Iswarma, you can always go back, rewind. That's the advantage of YouTube. Go back in a live class and catch up. Don't worry about it, okay? You might take some time. You might have a 5-10 minutes or half an hour delay also. That's okay. Go back. Just scroll. You can take that scroller behind. Everybody understood? Very nice. Now what I will do, now what I will do, I want to find R2. For finding R2, I need the current here. But I don't know the current. So maybe I will find the current here first. So what will this current be? Current will be voltage by resistance. So 12 by 400. So 12 by 400 means it will be 3 by 100. It will be 3 by 100. Now out of that current which is coming in, some current will go here. Some current will go here. Let's say I call this I1. Let's say I call this I2. What will be I1? What will be I1? I1 will be total voltage divided by total resistance 100 plus 500 which is basically 1 by 100. 1 by 600. So 6, 6 cancels 1 by 100. So how much will I2 be? Use the idea. I will be I1 plus I2 because the current is going to get distributed. So 3 by 100 will be 1 by 100 plus I2. So therefore I2 will be 3 minus 1 is 2. So 2 by 100 which means it is uh, sorry 1 by 50. I2 is 1 by 50. Very good. Now the last part. How much is R2? So for R2 V is equal to IR if I use it. Voltage is 6. Current is 1 by 50. R2 I want to find. 6 5s are 30. So 300 ohms. 300 ohms. A simple series parallel combination question can be lengthy. This kind of question can come in J. That's what you should realize. So don't say that, sir, series parallel, what questions might ask, sir? I will do complex questions. No, they don't ask only. They will, they will try to make the problem difficult with a simple series parallel. You have to use what? Ohm's law. You have to distribute the current. Series parallel combination. That's all. So yes, the answer is 300 ohms. Correct. Very good. How many of you enjoyed this question? I personally enjoyed this question because there were a lot of things which you need to find to get to the final solution. And that is also not straightforward. Let's do this. The problems. Quickly, ready with full josh. After that, let's have a short break. Let's have a short break for the remaining part of the ch chapter. I will make a separate video on how to get minimum 99 percentile with few chapters. And also give you a video for getting 90 percentile also. Okay, so both the videos I'll be making very soon. Don't worry. Chalo, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Cells and combinations, standard type of things. Here you have one is in series, the other one is in parallel, another one is in parallel. So if you are in series like this, but remember each cell may have some internal resistance also, may have some internal resistance also. So this is R1, this is E1, this is En, this is Rn, all right? So you can convert this into a single cell with a single internal resistance. That ES is given by just E1 plus E2 plus En. And that resistance internally is just given by simple R1 plus R2 plus Rn. Because in series everything adds, just add them, that's enough. But keep in mind, sometimes one of the cells might be wrongly connected. Maybe the third battery is oppositely connected. All the batteries are pointing here. Maybe some three, four batteries are wrongly connected. Then instead of plus E, it will be minus. So that's why both options are possible. So I'll put plus and minus here only for the batteries. For resistance, don't put plus minus. Resistances can't be subtracted like that. So just leave it as it is. Only voltages can be added, subtracted like that. So just Okay, put a plus and minus sign. Why is the minus sign? Because some of the batteries can be wrongly connected. So depending on scenario to scenario, you can solve the problem. Here, in case of parallel combination, 
in case of parallel combination something like this you might have a battery here with some internal resistance and many more such things this is your final battery right over here right so this is e1 r1 en rn you can again convert it into you can again convert it into a single battery with a single internal resistance with a single battery with a single internal resistance r value is very simple 1 by rp is 1 by r1 same like parallel resistors 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 like that but for ep the equivalent emf what you do is write e1 write e2 like that and go till the last e go till the last e put put a denominator here and put a big denominator here and what you do is again put instead of e1 put 1 by leave it plus 1 by something plus 1 by something like that 1 by something n terms here n terms on the top e1 e2 e3 e4 here also 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 will come in the big denominators denominator okay what will you put in the bottom here you'll put r1 r2 r3 like that rn same thing over here r1 r2 r3 rn very easy if you remember it like this otherwise if you try to remember e1 by r1 plus i2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 100 percent you will be confused you will remember some crocodile or dinosaur only in the examination you will not remember this cool everybody so this is the formula but if one of the cell is wrongly connected all the cells are pointing like this maybe some three four cells are oppositely connected where will you make the change will you make the change here in the resistance equivalent internal resistance equivalent formula i don't think so will you make the change here yes but where in the numerator or in the denominator in the numerator or in the denominator answer the question thank you rubina okay come on what is the answer r can't be negative only e can be positive or negative depending on how i connect it so yes it will be plus minus only in the numerator plus minus only in the numerator very good very good very good awesomeness i think it's good time that we solve some questions here it comes two batteries one emf is 18 one emf is 12 internal resistance is 2 internal resistance is 1 how much reading will the voltmeter record basically the voltmeter will record the equivalent emf because they are in what series or parallel they are connected besides each other besides each other not one after the each other so that's why equivalent emf in parallel formula you have to use come on let's use the formula and see what do we get ep will be what did i tell you e1 plus e2 i think there are two terms only divided by 1 by something plus 1 by something e1 is 18 e2 is 12 e1's resistance is 2 e2's resistance is 1 so 2 1 over here that's the formula now solve it so it will be 9 plus 12 divided by half plus 1 is 3 by 2 so this will be 12 by 3 that 2 goes on the top this will just make it 8 volts so 8 uh, did i make a mistake somewhere oh sorry what did i just do my bad sorry guys <laughs> my bad 9 plus 12 is 21 21 by 3 and that 2 goes on the top so this will be nothing but 14 volts so 14 volts is c option yep there you go c option c for captain stress very good by chance by chance let's say example this one is connected not like this but let's say it is connected like this then what will be the change then what will be the change instead of putting plus 12 here you will be putting minus you will be putting minus similarly by chance let's say the 18 was not like this but the 18 was like this say for example then the change will be over here minus sign will come over here and accordingly 
rest of the problem will continue. Understood? Okay, great, great. Uh, Vijaya, if you are in 10th standard, please watch my Pathfinder and Nurture series, which I had conducted last and last last year. There I go, you know, in many lectures because you are in 10th. Obviously, it will take you time. But this is for J2024. Okay, so probably not the right time for you to watch this particular lecture. Please watch the detailed classes where I've explained everything. What is the resistance? Everything in detail. Okay, so that will be beneficial. Let's move on to the next question coming up on your screen. What does it say? Two batteries, four and eight, one and two ohms connected to another resistance. The current and the potential difference is okay. Quickly identify and tell me are these two batteries in series or in parallel? Are these two batteries in series or in parallel? Quickly identify and tell me. Clearly one after the other. So this entire block can be combined as one single series cell. So what will be the EMF of that series cell? E1 plus E2. Oh, the directions are opposite. This is higher, this is lower. So 8 minus 4, which is 4 volt. What about the resistance 2 and 1? So 2 plus 1, which is 3 ohms. Is there an equivalent circuit which I can show? Definitely. This, this internal resistance, this is 4 volt, this is 3 ohm and this big resistance of 9 ohm is over here. Did you understand what we just did? We converted this entire block into one single cell. Remember, this is still going to be P. This is still going to be Q. If this is P, this is also going to be P because there is a wire. Potentials will be same. Q, Q, wire. So potentials will still be the same. Okay, keep these things in mind. Now, what is the question? First question says current and next question says voltage. This is a simple circuit. The current will go like this. The current will go like this. That's all. So the current will be the total voltage by the total resistance. Total voltage 4. Total resistance 3 plus 9. So it will be 4 by 12. So current will be 1 by 3 amperes. 1 by 3 amperes. Very good. Options are very limited now. 1 by 3 means option A only. Yes, that is correct. But we will continue solving because what if two options had 1 by 3 amperes? Then you have no other choice but to solve it. So voltage difference between P and Q, I can either measure it here or I can measure it here. Which is convenient with the battery or with this resistor of 9 ohm? I feel here it will be a little bit extra term. Here it is easy. Same voltage difference here, same voltage difference here. So why not uh, voltage across the 9 ohm which is using IR formula. Current is 1 by 3. Resistance is 9. So it will be just 3 volts. So 1 by 3 and 3 volts, that is definitely option A. Yes, perfecto. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. Shall we go ahead? Shall we go ahead? Okay. Now I have one more question for all of you. I'll write this and after this we'll have a break. If, if 10 cells of 2 volts and 1 ohm each are in series are in series but are in series but 2 are wrongly connected 2 are wrongly connected find the equivalent EMF and the equivalent internal resistance of the cells find the equivalent EMF as well as the equivalent resistance of the cells. Chalo, let's try to do this particular question. Resistance is the easiest part. RS will be nothing but 1 plus 1 plus like that. How many times? There are 10 cells, so 10 times. So won't it be just simply put 10 ohms? Won't it be just simply put 10 ohms? Everyone, how many of you have 10 ohms? Very good. Awesome. Then what about equivalent EMF? Yes. Will it be 10 times? Many people I know do this. 1 plus 1 plus 1. Like that. You know. 
10 times the right 10 times and two are wrongly connected so minus 1 minus sorry not 1 my bad 2 plus 2 plus 2 10 times and then minus 2 and then minus 2 I think this is wrong this is only wrong no this is not correct remember only only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 only 8 cells are connected correctly 8 cells are connected correctly and then 2 cells are connected wrongly these are the ones which are connected wrongly did you understand this so now I'm pretty sure you can see this 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 cancels and you just have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it will be 6 into 2 which is 12 volt else you will get some other answer like 16 volt and all that yeah understood this is why this problem is very very important this is why this problem is very very important many students this simple looking problem also they make a counting mistake so eight cells correct two cells wrong be careful okay out of 10 two cells are wrongly connected great so kirchhoff's rules will come back we have kirchhoff's rules wheatstone's bridge and the meter bridge experiment and the voltmeter and the ammeter concept as well right so we'll be doing that and then a symmetry problem as well symmetry and connection removal so right now it is close to 115 so how about a lunch break okay um, till 1 35 pm okay And please, if you have forgotten to like, please like the video right now. Like the video. And if you have forgotten to subscribe, please subscribe to the channel. Okay. So do that right now. We'll return in some time. Okay. Take care warriors. Don't go anywhere after the break. Come back here and get other people also. All right.
Hello. <clears throat> Hello, warriors. Welcome, welcome. I hope I'm audible, visible, clearly to all of you. Do let me know in the chat box. Welcome back, welcome back. Yes, looks like I should be audible. Let me just check it out. <laughs> what will be the next loss? Okay. Uh, so, till Friday you would have seen on the channel, all the classes are sch scheduled, right? Over here. So, if you see on the channel right now, you can see all the classes have been scheduled. Modern Physics, this is Coordination, uh, no, this is, uh, sorry, not this one, Upcoming. Uh, sequence and Series, PYQs of GOC and ISO Isomerism, then you have the main mock test. You know what is this? This is like a predictor mock test where all the questions which are highly likely based on high weightage which you must must do there is no way saying that i won't be doing this mock test this is like a must do thing and uh, the history if it repeats itself you will see that many questions from our predictor mock test actually end up coming in the j mains examination so that's why this predictor mock test you can actually predict and our team will be doing that research for all of you seeing the trends the latest trends for the 2024 J means so that is what it is and if you go on to the community you can see the entire schedule as well right over here yeah see this this is the entire schedule till Friday it is there uh, so on Saturday which topic you want me to do uh, let's see if you can do some small topic on that particular day and maybe we can utilize that day also what say everybody yep this class Gautam Raj might be there for more one one and a half hour at least I guess yeah, Dushant. Okay, all our J uh, Mantha and Avenger batch students are right now on the chats, like you can see. Okay, so do let me know in the comments after the video ends. Cool? Right. Shalo. Let's begin with the lecture then. Let's go back. Okay, let's begin. <clears throat> Okay, let's begin. Dual nature, semiconductor, dual nature already done, modern physics, I have already done it. I have already done it. Okay, do you want me to do um, something like um, heat transfer, KTG and thermo or something like that? We can do that on Saturday. What say? Because that's also a high weightage topic. That's also a high weightage topic and low input is needed. It's not high input, high output. It is low input high output what say let's complete that yeah dual nature is done previous lecture only last week only we did it correct gravitation is also a low input medium output chapter not high weightage but yeah gravitation electrostatics i'm planning to take it next week or something let's see we'll definitely do that put it up in the comments i want to see so many people who would probably have missed the class today watching it recorded put it up in the comments okay cool let's begin with kirchhoff's then we'll see Wheatstone's and uh, voltmeter, ammeter and uh, all those things. That's it. And then we are done for the day. Let's do this. Okay. With full josh, with full energy. I want everybody's focus on the lecture. No time to waste. No time to, you know, chit chat too much. Unfortunately, else, you know, I would be conducting many more sessions to interact with you. And, uh, you know, we'll have some casual sessions also, maybe to motivate you as well as to uh, relieve your stress as well. I think that is also going to be needed. So talking about Kirchhoff's rules, the first rule is basically your um, Kirchhoff's current rule or Kirchhoff's current law, sometimes also called as the junction law, sometimes also called as the junction law. And this is completely based on the conservation, conservation of charge principle, which says that if you have a junction, this is a junction, some currents are maybe coming in. There are some currents which are going in. Maybe there are some currents which are going out. Some currents which are basically going out. Then at that junction, if you take the total sum of the currents which are going in 
and if you take the total sum of the currents which are going out they both will be equal that is your kirchhoff's current law as simple as that okay very very straightforward nothing great about it cool yes awesome uh, chemical bonding uh, navamita ma'am will be taking it up in the next few days uh, she is not feeling well so don't worry she will be taking the class okay yep the lecture has been shifted the second law the second law which is kirchhoff's voltage law also called as the loop law sometimes is based on conservation of energy is based on conservation not of charge but of energy and it says that if you have multiple devices let's say d1 then let's say d2 then let's say d3 okay then you have d4 and maybe d5 like that and there are some branches here too possible okay something like this <clears throat> okay so these are some devices which are connected in this particular circuit and if you start from a point let's say over here you start from a point go across the loop loop law that means you need to complete a loop and come back to the same point you go across this and you come back to the same point then across each one you might experience some voltage differences across each one you might experience some voltage difference so voltage difference across one plus voltage difference across two like that till the last till the last device if you add them up it will be always zero if you add them up it will always be zero that means some might be positive some might be negative because you came back to the same point the voltage difference between this point and this point will be zero how can it be different if you come back to the exact same location that is your kvl but sometimes kvl is also used without coming back to the same point as well i'll come to that but before that let me show you an example imagine there is some device imagine there is some device and you experience plus 5 volts of difference then you experience minus 2 volts of difference then you experience plus uh, 10 volts of difference then how much voltage difference should be there over here so that kvl is applicable in this particular loop so if you start from this point the first thing that you get is plus 5 next thing is minus 2 next thing is 10 and next thing is question mark their addition should be zero so what will this question mark be come on my dear students come on my dear students what will the final answer be everybody yes 5 minus 2 3 3 plus 10 13 it will go on the other side it will become minus 13 volts minus 13 volts how many of you got this very good very good very good so that is the voltage across this particular device so that kvl is applicable so you can find such things using kvl sometimes you do not use kvl as a complete loop but from one point to the other point to find the voltage difference say from example there is a complex circuit like this okay some random circuit i am showing like this maybe and uh, okay something like this and let's say i choose two points one point is here and let's say the other point is over here it's a complex network of circuits this point is a this point is b there could be some devices in between there could be some devices in between maybe there is a device here there is a device here battery here resistor here bulb here whatever certain devices are there on the way then to find the voltage difference between these two points you use kvl but in the incomplete form or rather i would say from point a to point b form so incomplete loop form of kvl of kirchhoff's voltage law how to use that simple start from point a let's say the potential at point a is va first device 
will have some voltage difference. Second device will have some voltage difference like that till the nth device that difference will be there. So maybe you had 5 volts then you added 2, subtracted something, added something, subtracted something and finally what you get is you reach potential at point B. Once you get this expression you can just take VA on the other side so you will get delta V1 plus delta V2 like that till delta Vn is Vb minus Va which is potential difference between B and A which is potential difference between B and A understood how to find the voltage difference using KVL ideas only but for an incomplete loop so it's for you know two or more uh, two points you want to find the voltage difference that's when you use this is that clear very very much awesome now comes the main challenge how to decide the sign and many students face a issue with that sir when to take positive when to take negative if you are one of them please raise your hands if you face issues with if you face issues with basically the signs i will teach you three things after that you will never ever make a mistake first is first is for a battery first is for a battery like this next is for a capacitor last one is for a resistor let's say the current is going like this let's say this is the negative charge this is the positive charge here current direction does not matter if you are going in a loop while applying KVL and you happen to cross a battery you happen to cross a battery I can see many students get confused and if you're crossing the battery from here to here can you see this is technically lower potential this is higher potential you are going from low to high so you are jumping up so that means when you go like this you will put plus E in the equation you are going up positive so plus E E volts is the voltage difference if you are traveling in a big loop and you happen to go from here to here that means you are going from positive terminal to the negative terminal that means you will be putting minus E in fact if you notice very clearly in all the three diagrams in all the three diagrams I have done one specific thing this is lower voltage this is higher voltage negative positive low voltage high voltage resistor current goes from high voltage to low voltage so all these sides the way I have drawn it is basically lower potential lower potential all these sides if you notice carefully are actually higher potential current always goes from high to low for a capacitor negative plate is at lower potential positive is at higher potential in a battery this big line is at higher voltage the small line is the negative terminal or lower voltage that means if I go from here to here how much voltage will I get how much voltage increase will I get positive how much it will be nothing but Q by C remember Q is CV V is Q by C similarly if I go from here to here how much increase will I get V is IR using Ohm's law V is IR and the exact opposite over here so this will be minus Q by C and this will be obviously minus IR this will be obviously minus IR is this very very clear understood the signs shall I give you an example so that you don't make a mistake shall I give you an example so that you don't make a mistake everybody ready for it okay let's take a simple example just so that you understand the sign convention nothing else so say for example this is a resistor then there is a battery then there is a capacitor then there is a resistor oh. Or let's say there is another battery over here and then something is happening here then you get another resistor then here you have capacitor and then again over here a resistor then battery over here like this 
okay this is some big circuit out of that i have taken a specific loop let's say this i call it r1 e1 c1 some charge is also there let's say this is positive this is negative this is e2 let's say this is uh, r2 correct this is again some capacitor c2 maybe uh, this is negative this is positive maybe this is r3 and this is e3 okay so i want to apply kirchhoff's voltage law are you ready for it let's apply and see what do we get starting maybe from this point this point this point or this point you can choose any point that you want any point that you want but before you apply kvl there is one thing that you need to do and that is assume the currents without the currents it is of no use so let me assume some current i1 is flowing here there is some branching happening maybe there is some current which is flowing over here which is i2 maybe after some more things happen here maybe the current flowing is i3 the currents can get distributed remember that here here the currents might again get distributed and then let's say this is basically i4 okay so these are the currents which i have shown i have assumed it you can choose any direction doesn't matter answer will come accordingly it's like kinematic equations you assume something positive solve it you get the answer correct okay let's say we start from this point everybody come on focus what should be the first term that i get what should be the first term that i should write i am going across the resistor and i am going in the direction of the current in the direction of the current across the resistor the voltage will drop so won't it be minus i1 r1 won't it be minus because i am going from high to low current in the resistor flows from high to low voltage keep that in mind for a battery for a battery you don't worry about the direction of the current you just look at which is the big line which is the small line this is high voltage this is low voltage from high to low i am dropping down some minus e1 so minus e1 very good then what about this capacitor i am going from the positive to the negative charge positive plate to the negative plate high to low so again comes a minus sign and it will be minus q1 by c1 minus q by c correct q by c is the voltage then i go to this battery as i am traveling i am going from the small line to the big line negative to positive negative to positive is increase so you will put plus e2 plus e2 very good then you come down and you go across this resistor you come down you go across this resistor uh let's say had i chosen for example the direction to be the direction to be like this i3 is like this so who knows who cares doesn't matter i chose the direction to be like that that is very important as i go across the resistor i'm going against the direction of the flow of current current goes from high to low but i am traveling low to high i am traveling low to high that means increase so won't it be plus i3 r2 plus i3 r2 very good capacitor negative to positive plate so again plus so plus q2 by c2 q2 minus 2 plus it's an increase here i'm going in the direction of the current in the resistor that means i'm going from high to low high to low it's negative so it will be minus minus what is it i4 r3 i4 r3 lastly do not forget this battery is there i'm going from negative to positive so i'm increasing so it will be plus e2 plus e2 that's it the final sum should be zero final sum should be zero how many of you got it now how many of you understood how to apply kvl right now everybody clear with me my dear warriors perfecto understood o clear o shall we do some questions shall we do some questions coming up on your screen here it is for the given electrical arrangement what is the value of this current what is the value of this current come on figure this out is just based on kcl just use kirchhoff's current law that's it at any junction whatever comes in must go out whatever comes in must go out come on let's apply first let's see do i need it somewhere yeah 1 and 
वन एंड फोर ओवर हियर शैल गिव यू फाइव एम्पियर्स फाइव एम्पियर्स दिस इज फाइव बट आई डू नॉट नो हाउ मच इज दिस आई थिंक वी कैन फाइंड दैट आउट एट दिस जंक्शन फाइव इज गोइंग इन टू इज गोइंग आउट सो मोर थ्री ऑल्सो शुड गो आउट मोर थ्री एम्पियर्स शुड ऑल्सो गो आउट नाउ दैट थ्री एंड दिस फाइव टूगेदर ओवर हियर मीट एंड गिव यू हाउ मच एट एम्पियर्स एट एम्पियर्स करेक्ट दिस फाइव एंड दिस थ्री एट दिस जंक्शन विल गिव यू एट एम्पियर्स दिस एट एंड दिस फाइव विल गिव यू हाउ मच दिस एट एंड फाइव एट प्लस फाइव थर्टीन एम्पियर्स एट दिस जंक्शन वेरी गुड आउट ऑफ थर्टीन थ्री वेंट अवे सो हाउ मच मोर विल गो टेन एम्पियर्स सो एंसर इज टेन एम्पियर्स हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू रोड टेन वेरी गुड आलिखिया वेरी गुड अचीवर वेरी गुड वैष्णवी सो इज इंट इट लाइक अ पजल वॉज इन दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक अ पजल दिस इज अ बेसिक काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन विच स्टैंडर्ड क्वेश्चन विच यू गेट इन जे ई मीन्स इफ इट इज ओनली बेस्ड ऑन के सी एल यू कैन नॉट हैव मेनी कॉम्प्लेक्स क्वेश्चन दिस इज वन ऑफ द गुड क्वेश्चन विच यू कैन गेट इन जे ई मीन्स नेक्स्ट वन टू बैटरीज आर देर विद इंटरनल रेजिस्टेंस आर वन एंड आर टू कनेक्टेड इन सीरीज टू एन एक्सटर्नल रेजिस्टर द वैल्यू ऑफ आर फॉर विच द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस दिस सेल बिकम्स जीरो ब्यूटिफुल क्वेश्चन वोल्टेज अक्रॉस दिस सेल बिकम जीरो यू नो वाई दिस क्वेश्चन इज ट्रिकी यू नो वाई दिस क्वेश्चन इज ट्रिकी बिकॉज मेनी स्टूडेंट्स फर गेट दैट देर वॉज इंटरनल रेजिस्टेंस दे जस्ट टेक दिस सर्किट स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग इट नो मॉडिफाई द सर्किट अ लिटिल बिट रिमेंबर इंटरनल रेजिस्टेंसेज आर देर सो टेक्निकली यू शुड शो ओवर हियर आर वन ओवर हियर यू शुड शो आर टू एंड एज पर द क्वेश्चन द वोल्टेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस पॉइंट एंड दिस पॉइंट दिस वोल्टेज दिस वोल्टेज अक्रॉस दिस फर्स्ट सेल इज जीरो वोल्ट एज पर द क्वेश्चन दैट द क्वेश्चन now how to solve that in order to solve that i feel the first thing should be to find the current without that i don't think i can do anything much so let's just show how the current will flow this is how the current will be the current will be the total voltage upon the total resistance total voltage both are in series so it will be 2e plus a resistance r1 r2 and r so r1 plus r2 plus r so it will be 3e divided by r1 plus r2 plus r okay so that is the current but i don't want the current i want the condition for which the voltage is zero hmm how much do you think the voltage difference v1 will be use your kvl logic use your kvl logic kirchhoff's voltage law think if the current is flowing if the current is flowing like this across the cell the increase is plus 2e voltage increase is plus 2e acha so v1 will be plus 2e but the voltage is also dropping across the resistor internal resistance you are going in the direction of the current obviously it will drop by how much minus i r here r is r1 here i r r is r1 correct so plus 2e Minus I R. Everybody with me? And this V one is zero. So just put zero is equal to two E minus I R one. So therefore two E will be I R one. I is this whole thing three E divided by divided by R one plus R two plus R into R one. I have put this value of I over here, rearranging the terms. E cancels. So two into R1 plus R2 plus R will be 3 into R1. What is the question? Question is find the value of R, right? Uh, sorry, is equal to 3 into R1. So basically, 2R is equal to 3R1 minus 2R1 is R1. This will be minus 2R2. So R will be R1 by 2 minus R2. R1 by 2 minus R2. That is option B, I believe. Why? To Bombay. Just check this out. Yes, yes, Vaishnavi, that's correct. No, Jashree, it's not option three. Think some mistake was made. Just check it out. What mistake was made? Moving on to the next question coming up on your screen. When a resistance is connected across the terminals of a cell, the current is I one. When the resistance is changed to R two, the current is I two. 
how much do you think is the internal resistance of the cell if you have a cell with some internal resistance like this this is external then the current which will flow in the circuit won't it be e by r plus r that will be the current which will be flowing in the circuit now there are two scenarios given what is the first scenario for current i1 resistance is r1 so essentially i can say i1 will be e by r1 plus r for the next scenario resistance is r2 for current is i2 so i2 will be e by r2 plus r what is the next step come on what should be the next step is e there in the answers no so we have to eliminate how divide e will get cancelled so i1 by i2 will be i1 will have this r1 plus r in the denominator and this will make it go on the top so r2 plus r so i think next step will be to cross multiply so i1 capital r1 plus i1 small r will be i2 r2 plus small r i2 i want small r i want what is the internal resistance that means small r so bring small r together rest terms separately r i2 if i bring it here so i1 r minus i2 r will be i2 r2 minus i1 r1 taking r common and shifting it below so r will be i2 r2 minus i1 r1 the whole thing shift this below i1 minus i2 i1 minus i2 so is that option there definitely it is there option d definitely it is there option d very good very good alekya vaishnavi anugna very good so that's how you solve this particular question cool understood let's go to the next one coming up on your screen oops sorry i showed the answer forget it ha huh. the reading of the ideal voltmeter in this figure is how much it's a question based on incomplete kvl because you have been asked voltage difference voltage difference between this point and this point to find that out i think i need to know the current without that i cannot solve the question so how will the current be going is a battery of 4 volts like that 10 volts is clockwise so clockwise will dominate because anti clockwise less voltage is there so i will show the current here like this like this like this and coming back so how much will be the current it will be the total voltage 10 is clockwise 4 is anti clockwise so 10 minus 4 by total resistance which is 10 plus 20 which is 6 by 30 which is 1 by 5 so current is 1 by 5 amperes but that's not the part where i have to and find the voltage difference between two points so if i start from a apply kvl incomplete i am first encountering a resistor and i am going in the direction of the current so this is high voltage this is low voltage this is high potential low potential so there is a drop so minus current which is 1 by 5 into resistance which is 20 ir correct very good then here i am getting a battery high to low high to low so high to low means again minus so minus 4 where did i reach i ended up reaching at point n right so therefore va minus vn will be 4 plus 20 by 5 20 by 5 goes 4 times so 4 plus 4 is 8 volts so that is the voltage difference between points a and n that's the voltage difference between points a and n that's how you apply the kirchhoff's voltage law but incomplete law because i start from this and come here i'm not coming back here else the answer would have been zero keep that in mind is that okay everyone understood how to get 8 volts shall we go to the next concept and that is wheatstone's bridge concept shall we go to the next concept and that is wheatstone's bridge concept everyone cool so what is wheatstone's bridge it's a special arrangement of some resistors and that special arrangement when done in a special condition you will see there is one useless fellow in that like in every project which is done there is always one useless fellow other three four people will be working one useless fellow will be chumma doing some time pass everybody else is doing just got lucky so 
he or she is just tagging along. How many of you have experienced this in real life also? Teachers have given you project or assignment and always were you one of them or did you have some like that? Gautam Raj, that's you. Very good. Thank you for admitting it. See, we have very sincere students. Just like we have sincere teachers here, very sincere students who will admit if they do something wrong also. <laughs> okay. So, if you have a circuit like this, some external voltage is there. The current gets divided into two branches. One branch here, one branch here. And then, in between them, you connect some device. It could be resistor, it could be capacitor, it could be galvanometer, it could be voltmeter, anything, doesn't matter, you connect a donkey, you connect a monkey, doesn't matter. This is going to be the useless fellow. So, this is called as a Wheatstone's bridge, but right now it is not balanced. When balanced, when it is balanced, when it is balanced, then you will see this by this, this by this, the ratio is the same. R1 by R2 is R3 by R4. Then this device becomes completely useless, useless. So you can remove it out of the circuit. If you remove out of the circuit, R1 and R2 will be in, R1, R2 is in the same branch, it will be in series. R3 and R4 will be in the same branch, so they are also in series and both these branches are in parallel. So it becomes a very simple, easy peasy circuit. Like for example, look at this one. Look at this one. There is a resistor here, there is another resistor here, then there is another resistor here, another resistor here, something like this and another resistor here. This is R, this is 2R, this is 2R, let's say this is 4R, this is 5R. Question is to find the equivalent resistance between A and B. What is the equivalent resistance between A and B? That's the question. What will you do? See if this is like a Wheatstone. I think it is. Because if you notice over here carefully, R and 2R, R upon 2R is the ratio 1 is to 2. 2R and 4R is also the same ratio, 1 is to 2. That means 100% it is a balanced bridge. And the moment it is balanced, forget this useless fellow. This is, this is completely useless fellow, correct? So the easy uh, way of drawing the circuit will be one resistor here, one resistor here. That's it. This one will be R plus 2R, which is 3R. This will be 2R plus 4R, 2R plus 4R, which is basically 6R. Now both these resistors are in parallel. So 3R is parallel to 6R. So the final resistance between A and B will be R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. R1 is 3R, R2 is 6R. So 3R plus again 6R. 6, 3s are 18, 6 plus 3, 9. So it will be 2R. So that is the equivalent resistance between A and B. That's how you can use Wheatstone's bridge. Correct? Answer is 2R. Very good, Shiva. Very good. Tamizaji. Very good. Hello. Hi. Yeah. What are the applications? We are going to come to that. We are going to see that it is used for determining unknown resistances and in many such uh, places where you want to find certain value, be it resistance or maybe sometimes voltage to use the circuit and then you find it out okay so is that only Wheatstone's bridge the answer is no there is an extended Wheatstone's also there is an extended Wheatstone's also it is not there in your books but it comes in J means extended Wheatstone extended Wheatstone which is balanced 
meaning something like this. Look at this example. R, 2R, 3R. Let's say 3R or 2R. Okay. So let's say this is 2R, this is 4R, and this is, yeah, 6R. Then let's say this is 3R, let's say this is 6R, this is 9R. Let's say this is 4R, this is 8R this is 12R. How many of you are able to see that actually this is a wheat stone? How many of you are able to see this is actually a wheat stone? Yeah. Observe the current comes in. There is a branch here. 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 And there are some resistors connected between the branches. If you look at this, this and this resistances, they are in the ratio of 3 is to 1 is to 2. You take any such branch, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, always 1, 2, 3 times, 1, 2, 3 times, 1, 2, 3 times. So 100% now it is a balanced bridge. It is 100% now a balanced bridge. That means you know which all resistors are useless. This, 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 this. All these are useless. So these, 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 these are all in parallel. In each branch, they are in series. Series, series, series. And they are in parallel. Understood? Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Understood what we just did? So you will have basically how many such branches? One, two, three and four branches four branches will be there and then you can combine it into one single resistor so you will have something like this yep so that's how it is clear so that is extended wheatstones bridge now where do you use Wheatstone's bridge? How can you use Wheatstone's bridge to find the resistance? The answer is potentiometer setup. Potentiometer setup. So let's see the potentiometer setup. In a potentiometer setup, it is very simple. I'll explain this to you very, very crisply. You have a wire of some resistance. You have a wire of some resistance. You connect a known resistance generally R. And then you connect some unknown resistance, let's say X, and connect it across this wire which has good amount of resistance, usually called as the potentiometer wire. And these ends are also powered by a battery or some external source, something like this. This is some external supply which you give it to the battery. Now what you do, you basically take this point, connect it to a galvanometer galvanometer basically shows current deflects when there is some current and you connect the other end on the potentiometer wire now if you notice carefully there is one resistor here one resistor here this is one resistance this is one resistance it's like the current has two branches and there is something which is connected in between if the galvanometer deflects that means current is flowing that means this is not a useless fellow. You now connect it to some other point and see what is the current. Maybe the current reduced. Okay, good. So you move it further till you get basically zero deflection. That is also called as null deflection. That is also called as null deflection. This is also called as null deflection. And then what you do, you measure this as L1 and measure this as L2. This is length L1, this is length L2. Now, the moment you get null deflection, realize that 
actually speaking these are four resistors connected like this four resistors connected like this and this galvanometer is a completely useless thing galvanometer is a completely useless thing so this is r this is x this is r1 this is r2 r1 is rho l1 by a r2 is rho l2 by a remember resistance is directly proportional to the length so therefore because they are balanced can i not say r by x r by x is r1 by r2 is r1 by r2 which is rho l1 by a by rho l2 by a hence r by x will be l1 by l2 this way you can find out the unknown resistance you can find out the unknown resistance you know the known resistance you can measure the length and this length from that you can find x value is that clear this is the potentiometer experiment oh sorry why did i said potentiometer i'm so sorry guys i wanted to say meter bridge and i ended up saying potentiometer i'm so sorry <laughs> meter bridge potentiometer is deleted from the syllabus <laughs> potentiometer is deleted from the syllabus yes correct now this is to determine to determine unknown unknown resistance to determine unknown resistance happens 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 let's do some questions based out of that five equal resistances are connected as shown in the figure find the equivalent resistance between the points a and b find the equivalent resistance between the points a and b come on think about it what is the answer i think you have to remove the mask it's in disguised form right now this diagram this diagram which is right now like this i'll tell you what this part which you see this part which you see try to open it up in three dimension and put it over there put it over there so that you see basically this one and even this part even this part which you see over here try to open it and put it here so we'll see one part over here and this part which is like this over here i have opened it up just try to visualize this how many of you are able to visualize this just it's it's like it's folded you open up that fold it will look like this so this was one point this was one point so now this will be a this will be b and you know what all these things are now this is r this is r even even this r is right over here and this r is over here this r is over here is this looking like a wheat stone which is balanced 100% ratio is 1 is to 1 balanced ratio is 1 is to 1 and it is 100% balanced r r r r 1 1 so who is the useless fellow over here this is basically useless fellow useless fellow so now you can solve the problem very easily these two resistances these two resistances will make it 2r and these two resistances will again make it 2r and they are combined over here connected to point b so the equivalent resistance obviously will be just r will be just r correct because they both are in parallel 2r 2r parallel means it will become r option which one pakka c very good c for captain shreyas so this was disguised you have to unmask that disguise but in a very different way it was like a 3d disguised form three dimensional disguised form correct cool let's go to the next one if you loved the question smash the like button if you haven't done that yet and if you have subscribed very good if you haven't do that right now or else you'll miss all the classes ahead meter bridge setup is there this is a known resistance this is unknown you can see this is a potentiometer wire Oh, sorry meter bridge wire meter bridge wire and this is powered to an external circuit question is find the value of the unknown resistance now usually when it is a meter bridge the reason why it is called as a meter bridge 
is because the total length is 1 meter. Total length is 1 meter. So if this is 20, naturally then this will be 80 centimeter. Naturally then this will be 80 centimeter. Now according to the meter bridge formula, this resistance by this resistance is this length by this length. So 55 by 55 by R will be nothing but 20 by 80. 20 by 80 means 1 by 4. That means R will be 4 into 55. That means it will be 220 ohms. 220 ohms option B, IIT Bombay. Yes, it is the correct answer. You can see that. How many of you wrote it? Very good Anugna. Very good Gautam Raj. Very good Nadir. Very good Vision Media. Achiever, Vaishnavi. Yes. Very good. Very good. Excellent Achiever. Excellent. Let's go to the next question coming up on your screen. Two resistances are connected in the two gaps of the meter bridge. A balance point is 20 centimeters from zero end. Okay. Another resistance is connected in series with the smaller of the two. The null point goes to 40. What is the value of the smaller resistance? Let's just draw the circuit for the sake of it. Otherwise, we don't need it. Okay, so this is how the circuit will look like. Correct? Everyone, meter bridge circuit. Okay, so balance point is 20 centimeter from the zero end. Okay. So if this is 20, this is 80. So 20, so 20 by 80 will be this resistance by this resistance. So I will call this as R, this as capital R. So this will be small r by capital R. 20 by 80 is 1 by 4. So small uh, or rather capital R will be 4 times of small r. That is the first information that I get. In the first scenario, another 15 ohm is connected in series with smaller. This is a smaller resistance. You connect one more resistance with it. You connect basically one more resistance of 15 ohms over here. Then the null point goes to 40 centimeter. So the smaller is basically R plus 15 now. Bigger is unaffected. Null point shifts to 40. So if this is 40, the remaining is 60. The this is 40, that is 60. So this will be 40 by 60. Okay, capital R is small 4R. So keep that in mind. R plus 15. Capital R is 4 small R. 40 by 60 is basically 2 by 3, correct? So cross multiply. Cross multiply. So it will become 3R plus 45 is basically 8R. 8R minus 3R. 8R minus 3R is basically 5R. So R, therefore, is nothing but 45 by 5, which is basically 9 ohms. 9 ohms is again C for Captain Shreyas. Very good. Congratulations, we got C. Alekhya. Yes, Shreya will be coming to symmetry problems also. Don't worry. Just after this, we'll be coming to symmetry problems. Is that okay? Understood? Okay. So these kind of questions do come in your J mains and straightforward linear problems is not very out of the way kind of things very good now before we go to galvanometer let me tell you about symmetry problems because i think that was one part which was remaining we'll just complete that connection removal Symmetry and connection removal, I will tell you the easiest trick. After this, you will not study any other <laughs> books, tricks and all that. I will tell you easy procedural direct application based trick, which you can use in all these kind of problems. So how does this trick work? Pay attention because, you know, many people get confused in these things only. But after the trick, it becomes simple. Okay, ready for it? Okay, let's have a look. Let's say you have some symmetrical diagram.
I am just showing some lines. These lines represent what? Resistors. There are resistors here. One resistor here, 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 here. Okay, I am just drawing some fancy figures. Just so that you are awake. Now, see this. You first check between which two points you want to find the resistance. Point A and point B. Next step. Draw a line. You, you need not have to draw it physically, but mentally. Or you can just imagine, just draw a line between those two points where you want to find the resistance. So this is that point. This is that point. Then draw perpendicular bisector. What will you draw? Perpendicular bisector. So this is the perpendicular bisector. Can you see that? This is the perpendicular bisector. Do you see that? This is perpendicular bisector. That's the next step. And then you see whatever is there on the left is there on the right. Then you will realize that this is a problem of symmetry. If you join the points between which you want to find the resistance and then draw a perpendicular bisector and you see whatever is there on the left is there on the right. Then you will realize that yes, I can use the trick of symmetry. Till this point it is clear. Yeah, for capacitor also same thing will work. Inductor also same thing will work. Don't ask me in cap So for capacitor problems, is there a new trick? No, it's the same trick. Will infinite ladder technique work for capacitors? Yes or no? Will infinite ladder technique work for capacitors? Yes or no? Will disguised method trick work for capacitors? Yes or no? Will Wheatstone's bridge work for capacitors? Yes or no? Yes. Instead of R1 by R2 is R3 by R4, what will be there? C1 by C2 is C3 by C4. That's all. Instead of R, there will be C. Nothing changes. So if you learn current electricity, isn't it like indirectly learning some parts of capacitors, at least that equivalent part? At least that equivalent parts? Yes or no? Very good. Excellent. So now, if you look at the next question, tell me, is it a problem of symmetry? Yes or no? Come on, mentally, imagine that line, draw perpendicular bisector and tell me, can you see the symmetry, whether it exists or no? Can you see the symmetry, if it exists or no? Join the points between those two, where you want to find the resistance and then draw the perpendicular bisector bisector perfect is the thing on the left on the right yes this is also symmetric combination of resistors uh, dimpu i have already done a video very long time back if you want a separate lecture you can just search shreyas combination of resistor shreyas sir you will find it but whatever techniques i told you know dimpu those five six things uh, series parallel disguised right this one symmetry and all those things these are the main patterns which you should know for j means if you know that your j means is done okay now this is also symmetric this is also symmetric so we can use a trick so in this which is that part of the circuit which is lying on the perpendicular bisector if you notice it is this part it is this part the idea is you can completely forget it what will you do eliminate eliminate completely eliminate this and once you eliminate you will see it will become much simpler circuit something like this something like this i believe Something like this. Now this is much simpler. Series, 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 series. Series, 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 series. Both of them are in parallel. This becomes much simpler, yes or no? Everybody understood what we just did? This is a separate branch. This is a separate branch. Between them, whatever was there, we eliminated it. So now this looks like a much simpler, simple, simple series 
or parallel combination simple series or parallel combination as simple as that got it very good but over here is there anything on the perpendicular bisector over here there was a big resistor or a capacitor or a battery whatever something was there here it was there here nothing is there when nothing is there but a junction is there there is a junction can you see a junction a node can you see a junction a node how many of you can see that junction or that node the moment you see that expand it the moment you see that expand it and make it into a diagram like this slightly difficult but i will try expand it something like this can you see it can you see it i've just expanded the node now okay i stretched it like that so it becomes like this now you can remove it or eliminate it you can remove it or eliminate it so now the diagram looks something like this now is it a simple series isn't it a simple series or parallel combination isn't it a simple series or parallel combination so from here we went here and then we came over here got it my dear students understood how to solve these questions very good yep if if you rim if that wire is not there you will always see a junction you expand that junction you expand that junction you will see a wire or two wires or three wires on that perpendicular bisector remove all those wires which lie on the perpendicular bisector here there was one wire if there are more wires we would remove those multiple wires on the perpendicular bisector cool so let's see if you guys can quickly think about this problem which is the most famous problem most famous problem which is usually asked and it goes something like this this is b this is a there is one resistor here 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 there is one here all of them are identical can you find the equivalent resistance that's the question first of all start with is this a symmetry problem or no because i don't think it is a simple series or parallel problem as of now if you join the line between the points where you want to find the resistance and draw a perpendicular bisector draw a perpendicular bisector you can clearly see on the perpendicular bisector lies a joint a node so when there is a joint or a node you pull it you stretch it so that it becomes a wire and then you can eliminate it so here it looks something like this i believe this is how it will look like if you if you basically stretch it like that if you basically stretch it like that can you see that now you can clearly see that it lies on the perpendicular bisector it lies on the perpendicular bisector so just remove this particular line and now whatever is remaining is going to look much simpler whatever is remaining is going to look much simpler like this that's all now this is easy now this is easy to solve yes or no now this is easy to solve like for example these two resistors over here which are there there is one resistor here 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 so these two resistors are in series so it is 2r this this these two are in again series so this is also 2r and their combination is in parallel and them are in series and then finally in parallel you can solve this and finally get the equivalent resistance you can finally get the equivalent resistance understood vaishni is saying 8r by 
seven r by three. You figure that out. Post the answers in my Telegram channel. You know I have my own Telegram channel also, Captain Strayers. You can just go through that. Okay, you can post it over there. I'll be very happy if you guys discuss. Cool. Let's move ahead now to galvanometer, voltmeter, and ammeter problems. Can you believe on this holiday, this Christmas, you have sat over here and completed one chapter which is worth eight marks at least till sixteen marks. Sometimes they combine current electricity with EMI. Sometimes they combine it with some another chapter like capacitors, or sometimes they can combine it with errors and units and dimensions. So those combination questions can also happen. So eight marks pakka, sixteen marks up to. That means it's a very very good delta change which has happened just in these few hours. So last one, last half an hour or one hour now. Let's complete galvanometer, voltmeter, and ammeter. Right? Cool. So for galvanometer concept, because this is used in voltmeter and ammeter, remember, remember, a galvanometer is nothing but is nothing but a device which measures small amounts of current, small amounts of current, and you pass some current inside the galvanometer, you pass some current inside the galvanometer, the deflection which is there. The deflection which is there inside the galvanometer is directly proportional, is directly proportional to the current passing inside of it. Is directly proportional to the current passing inside it. It measures very small current. It measures small current. It measures small current. I max is also called as the full scale. Deflection current, full scale deflection current, meaning that's the maximum deflection which can happen. And when that full deflection happens, you cannot increase the current further. If you do, it will burn. If direction of current is reversed, direction of current is reversed, is reversed, then deflection is on the other side. Deflection is also reversed. Something which you should be aware of, okay? The coil, the coil of the galvanometer has a small resistance, like one ohm, ten ohms, twenty ohms, something like that. So it also has a small resistance that you must be aware of. And when I say the deflection is directly proportional to the current. When the deflection is basically directly proportional to the current, uh, sorry, uh, let me put it like this. Yeah, okay, take it. Deflection is basically some constant times of current. Then this deflection, which happens per unit current, this deflection which happens per unit current, this is called as the current sensitivity. Current sensitivity. What is it called? Current sensitivity. How much degrees does it deflect per ampere of current, or per milliampere? How many divisions does the needle move by? That is current sensitivity. Usually, the symbol for that is S I. Sensitivity of current. Sensitivity of current. That is current sensitivity. Keep this in mind. Okay. That's one thing which you should know. Another thing which you should know is also something called as voltage sensitivity, voltage sensitivity, which is the deflection per unit voltage. So this is your voltage sensitivity, which is S V, and both this voltage sensitivity and current sensitivity are related to each other, like this. If you divide both of them. S I by S V. Notice what happens. Theta by I, theta by V. It will become V by I. V is I R, so it will just become R. So S I will be R times S V. Usually voltage is resistance into current. Here current sensitivity is resistance into voltage sensitivity. 
सो दिस बिकम्स अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर्म्यूला फॉर सेंसिटिविटी प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर सेंसिटिविटी प्रॉब्लम्स ओके सो यू शुड नो ऑल दीज टर्मिनोलॉजीज विच आर यूज इन गैलोनोमीटर ओके लेट्स डू सम क्वेश्चन यू विल गेट एन आइडिया देर आर फिफ्टी डिविजन ऑन बोथ साइड जीरो टू फिफ्टी जीरो टू माइनस फिफ्टी वेन यू पास पॉजिटिव करेंट इट विल गो हियर वेन यू पास नेगेटिव करेंट इट विल गो हियर द मैक्सिमम डिफ्लेक्शन करेंट इज टू मिली एम्पियर देन द सेंसिटिविटी इज हाउ मच देन द सेंसिटिविटी इज हाउ मच कम ऑन टेल मी द आंसर माइ डियर स्टूडेंट्स टेल मी द आंसर माइ डियर स्टूडेंट्स कम ऑन थिंक अबाउट इट देन द सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द करेंट इज डिफ्लेक्शन पर यूनिट करेंट हाउ मच इज द डिफ्लेक्शन फिफ्टी डिविजन्स फिफ्टी डिविजन्स हाउ मच इज द करेंट टू मिली एम्पियर्स so it is basically 25 division per milliampere so 25 is there as option number c you can see that option number c that's it 25 divisions per milliampere cool now some of you might be thinking sir 50 divisions are there on either side so what to do with that information nothing see if it starts from zero like that there are 50 over here here also there are 50 don't consider it as 100 this part is the same as this part magnitude wise you will get 2 milliamperes here also 2 milliamperes here also but only the direction is opposite so if you consider this part from here to here you get 2 milliamperes for 50 divisions so 2 milliamperes for 50 divisions so don't count 100 divisions that will be wrong next galvanometer coil has a resistance of 10 sensitivity of 4 if there are 100 divisions on the scale then the maximum potential difference that can be applied is how much maximum potential difference that can be applied is how much come on uh yes you can you can convert the milliamperes into amperes but it depends on the options i think here the units are missing but i think the units mentioned should have been divisions per milliampere if it was divisions per ampere you will take that milli on the top and you know you will accordingly convert it so it depends on the units of the options and the question okay resistance is given sensitivity is given scale divisions are given maximum voltage that can be applied hmm four divisions per milliampere there are 100 divisions think about it there are four divisions per milliampere there are 100 divisions can you guess what is the maximum current that can be applied can you quickly think about the maximum current that can be applied if there are 100 divisions and four divisions correspond to 1 milliampere so 100 divisions will be corresponding to how many milliamperes that's going to be 25 milliamperes yes or no everybody with me 25 how many of you are saying 25 milliamperes very good now galvanometer is nothing but a coil with some resistance you apply some voltage and there is some current so maximum voltage will be maximum current into the resistance of the coil maximum current is 25 milliamperes resistance of the coil is 10 ohms 10 ohms so it will be 250 milli volt 250 milli volt or uh, you can say it as 0.25 volts 0.25 volts yes that's the answer you can also say this as 0.25 volts correct how many of you wrote d option oh my god you guys made a mistake you guys made a mistake there ha ah, you know where you made the mistake you forgot this was milli you just chumma did it and then you didn't check the units if you didn't check the units you would have got option d no i did delhi director will not take you he will not take you you made a mistake no entry ban a was the correct answer be careful <laughs> cool let's move on now let's move on now next thing That is a ammeter. Ammeter, ammeter, whose symbol is like this usually, is connected, is connected in series 
is connected in series to measure the current to measure the current which is passing through the device ammeter has very small very small resistance it has very very small resistance or else if it has good resistance then just imagine you connect an ammeter which is like a big resistor in the path it will block the current the device will not work only or it will work with very low output so you are spoiling it so you are going to make sure it causes minimal damage to the circuit by having very low resistance because it is connected in series in series correct also ideal ammeter will have no resistance ideal ammeter has no resistance now how do you make a ammeter using galvanometer using galvanometer all you do is okay i'll give you a simple puzzle not puzzle i mean simple logical question there is some city over here there is some city over here okay lot of traffic jam christmas everybody is going to the mall everybody is going to the mall but from the highway some people are coming they don't want to go to the city they want to continue to the next city one option is they can go through the city they can go through the city they'll get stuck in the traffic they'll get stuck in the traffic and then I'll, again they'll come out but other option is they'll use ring road or they'll use bypass road yes or no they will use bypass road they'll use bypass road because there is congestion over here congestion over here but few people will still go from here most people will go from the bypass who know or are aware very few people will end up going through the main city yes or no now the same thing is done same thing is done when you construct an ammeter what you do is you have a galvanometer you have a galvanometer can galvanometer take huge currents definitely not just like i mentioned over here a galvanometer measures very small current micro amperes pico amperes like that but ammeter should measure good amounts of current it is used to measure any kind of current so what you do is because this fellow poor fellow can't measure too much current you connect another resistor which is very very small resistor usually much smaller than rg over here in parallel this is called as the shunt shunt means parallel another word for shunt is parallel so what happens is whatever current comes over here whatever current comes over here most of the current goes through this branch most of the current goes through this branch hardly anything goes here and it will keep the coil safe and again it will collect back over here so this way you are able to assess how much current was flowing in the circuit because you only take a small sample imagine a river is flowing and you want to measure how dirty the water is will you collect the entire river godavari river is flowing you want to measure how clean or dirty the water is will you take the entire river water and come and uh, put it in the lab no right what do you do you take a sample you take a test tube you will dissolve some water at two three places and you will take that sample in the test tube you are not a fool to take the entire godavari water and measure it in the test tube uh, sorry measure it in the lab same way out of all the river water you take a sample the rest is going to pass that's all that happens clear everyone rest is just like solving it like a normal series parallel problem there is nothing great over there so if i is the maximum current of the ammeter to be measured to be measured and here ig is the max or rather full scale deflection current full scale deflection of the galvanometer then you can write equations like i is equal to ig plus some current will flow here through the shunt ig plus is this is your kirchhoff's current law you can also say since 
rs is parallel to rg the voltage difference is going to be the same so voltage across galvanometer and shunt will be is into rs will be ig into rg if you notice any of these equations are they something new to you is it like oh my god so revolutionary sir revolution 3.0 sir no right you know this is true for any series parallel circuit even if you did not know anything about this just looking at the diagram you will say ha input current is total output current that is kirchhoff's current law ha this is in parallel with this so voltages are same voltage here is ir voltage here is ir so i into r and i into r that's all so that is all you need to do please don't remember any other for formula don't remember any other formula is that clear everyone so these are the only two things which you need to do in case of galvanometer as a ammeter problem what happens is what happens is you will be seeing that your actual ammeter at the end of the day will be nothing but a galvanometer with a parallel resistance with a parallel resistance that's going to work like an ammeter if in a galvanometer the divisions used to be like 1 uh, milliampere then here you had 2 milliamperes etc the only change that you will do when you connect a parallel resistor is that instead of milliamperes on that scale you might write 1 ampere 2 ampere like that why because now even when you pass amperes and amperes of current most of the current will bypass hardly any current will flow through the galvanometer keeping it safe and secure without burning the coil so although you are measuring the current through the galvanometer indirectly you are measuring the actual current which is flowing inside over here actually you are not measuring the complete current you are measuring only the current which ends up going through the galvanometer it's just that you are changing the scale on the galvanometer you rub it erase it and put a new sticker on to it and call it as an ammeter is that okay is that okay everyone cool very nice very nice very nice great now let's do some questions i think then you will understand it if an ammeter is connected in parallel to a device instead of series some fool did not connect it in Uh, you know series but they are connected in parallel so what do you think will happen what do you think will happen come on think about it it will show voltage instead of current it will not deflect only it will show max deflection cal coil may burn functioning won't be affected and it will somehow deflect as in series it won't be mattering at all thank you hasni for all the love from andhra some students from tamil nadu Anugna already talking about biryani already feeling hungry looks like the food your lunch was not enough okay what do you think usually your ammeter is connected in series with the device and it measures the current but somebody took the device connected in parallel to the ammeter what do you think will happen do not forget ammeter has very low resistance so when you have very low resistance when you pass that current all the current will go through the ammeter huge surge of current will go through the ammeter very less current will go through the device that means if you are measuring the current through a bulb or a fan hardly any current will go through it the bulb will not work fan will not work ac tv whatever device you are measuring the current for it will not work most of the current will go through the ammeter and it may end up burning it also it's like shorting it it might damage the device also it's like because very low resistance very low resistance means it's like you are taking a wire and shorting it you are shorting you are shorting it because this is negligible ohms negligible ohms that's it the moment you short damage burn exactly so hence the answer is it will show full deflection and it may even burn understood this concept 
understood because ammeter has very little resistance correct moving on the net resistance of an ammeter should be very small the total resistance of the ammeter is very small why is it small because think about it earlier there was a wire there was a device over here now you decided to measure the current so when you decided to measure the current which is passing in this circuit across the device what you do you place the ammeter here so this should not affect the circuit should not change current or voltage in the circuit in the circuit so that means this must have very low resistance so it should not what guys get overheated what are you saying man are you sure no it does not draw current no it does not appreciably change the current which you are measuring if this also had 10 20 ohms or 1000 ohms resistance it will change the circuit it is changing the circuit so that's the reason why you keep this as very low resistance so that's why you see answer is c yep answer is c guys correct how many of you wrote c no it can measure large current no that's not the reason to measure large current what do you do okay let's say if this option was correct then you know what will be the thing you connect a resistance in parallel across the galvanometer that's why you will be able to measure large current you want to increase this i how to increase this i you can't change i g that's a fixed thing so you take in more current but you bypass it you bypass it that's how you increase the current so if you want to bypass it more that means this resistance should be even smaller so the bypass resistance shunt resistance should be much much smaller guys is that clear is that clear very good tell me one thing when you have two resistors in parallel the total resistance is it less or more than the individual resistance when you have two resistance in parallel the total resistance is it less or more than the individual resistance answer the question answer the question come on 100% it is less in series it adds up it becomes big but in parallel it will become small so it will become much smaller so when you add this small resistance it makes the net resistance even smaller which is what we want which is exactly what we want a low resistance very good excellent next some galvanometer is there okay of coil this much gives full scale deflection with a current of 5 milliamperes what should be made arrangement so that it measures up to 1 ampere it measures up to 1 ampere let's draw and you will understand why i said there is no need of by hurting any formula for ammeter and voltmeter it is a simple series and parallel circuit that's all galvanometer okay of 20 ohms okay gives full scale deflection at 5 milliamperes that means 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 amperes this is your galvanometer this is your galvanometer okay cool now in order to measure up to 1 ampere okay so what i do i connect another resistors in parallel like this so that even when 1 ampere is coming only 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 goes here so this is my shunt resistance so my dear students tell me out of 1 ampere if 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 goes here how much approximate current will go over here how much approximate current will go over here come on think and tell me 1 ampere and this is 0 0.005 think about it think about it carefully and tell me how much current will go through the shunt negligible change will happen out of 1000 5 laddus are taken 995 laddus are still remaining it's 995 is close to 1000 so won't it still be 
approximately 1 ampere yes or no my dear warriors approximately 1 ampere very good achiever very good my dear warriors proud of all of you so now do you see this and this are in parallel shunt is parallel to galvanometer correct shunt is parallel to galvanometer so what is the voltage across shunt i r i into r what is the voltage across galvanometer i r so 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 into r into r what will rs be come on what will rs be i think the answer should be there on your on your chats now yes 100 into 10 to the power minus 3 0.1 ohm so you will connect 0.1 ohm parallel to the galvanometer when you connect a resistor parallel to the galvanometer it becomes an ammeter and the ammeter is connected in series don't get confused so i think it should be d option it delhi gates are open sv said correctly abhi anugna very good achiever very good gautam raj very good shivalingam yes can we leave current electricity topic nikita and others who are asking this doubt can i leave current electricity yes provided you are okay to lose up to 16 marks if you can cover up that 16 marks using some other chapter i am okay with it and you should be okay to lose up to 16 marks up to and i feel current electricity is not difficult very lengthy like ray optics see ray optics is very lengthy big chapter it takes around 15 days 10 days to complete the chapter in normal coaching whatever 10 to 15 days it's a very high input and medium to high output kind of a chapter but current electricity is not low input but medium input but high output so if you're okay and you have studied other sub other uh, chapters then you can leave it otherwise i don't think so cool moving on voltmeter voltmeter ready for the last part ready for the last part how many of you sat till uh, how many of you sat from morning till now how many of you start from morning till now how many of you sat for four hours almost Chalo, at least three and a half hours at least you sat how many of you are there very good alekhya sat it yeah, you can watch the old one shot, definitely. Wow, very good, Arvinta. Very good, Advayat. Achivar. Gulab Jamun. Who is this Gulab Jamun? The photo is also like Gulab Jamun only. Very good. I also feel like having Gulab Jamun now. After this lecture is over. My throat is gone. Chalo, let's do this voltmeter part. So, voltmeter. It is used to measure... <coughs> voltage by connecting in by connecting it in parallel across the device you always connect it in parallel so if you have a device across which you want to measure the voltage you always connect the voltmeter like this now this voltmeter Obviously, if it has low resistance, you know what will happen? All the current will go through the voltmeter. The device papa will not get anything. So, for the device to work properly, you need to make sure that the voltmeter has very high resistance so that most of the current still continues to go with the device. Hardly any current will go here. It's like this time, you don't want anything to go through the bypass. You want everything to go through the city. It's exactly opposite. So that's the reason why I would say that, you know, the resistance, resistance is very high. Now, can you guess in ammeter we used to connect a parallel resistance with a galvanometer to make it a ammeter shunt parallel with galvanometer to make it an ammeter. But here inside a voltmeter, what will you do? 
to make a galvanometer into a voltmeter you take the galvanometer and you connect a series resistance one after the other and that's it so a voltmeter technically is nothing but a galvanometer plus a series resistance plus a series resistance that's all that is so just to explain you the inside working so you will have this galvanometer right over here you connect a series resistance this is series resistance this is one point this is one point these are the two terminals of the voltmeter that is what is there inside the voltmeter this is what is there inside the voltmeter your device will be connected over here something like this your device will be over here across which you are trying to measure the voltage now listen in carefully listen in carefully whatever voltage is there across the device whatever voltage is there across the device is also the voltage here so can i say the voltage across the device is also the voltage v which is there across these two now the galvanometer can't deflect too much remember there is a limit till which it can deflect so when you are trying to measure maximum voltage maximum current is flowing through it maximum current is flowing through it so can i say can i say the voltage across voltage across the galvanometer and the series resistance will be the current current into the total resistance so it will be rg plus rs rg plus rs that's it so that is the voltage across the device it is current current into the total resistance this voltage and this voltage are same this is the formula but you don't have to remember this i mean it's natural it should come naturally to you because it is actually a parallel series combination if you sit and by heart this you will get confused you will not know the working you will not know how it is happening you can see the current is directly proportional to the voltage across the device the current is directly proportional to the voltage across the device this current by the way is flowing through the galvanometer the same current is flowing through the galvanometer so if you measure the deflection in the galvanometer you are indirectly measuring the current indirectly you are also measuring the voltage that's the whole idea of this is that clear so when you buy a voltmeter or an ammeter from a market and you see that the cost is much higher than the galvanometer you should think you have been made a fool because if you take buy one resistor which costs you some 2 3 rupees you can make that galvanometer into a voltmeter or you can make the galvanometer into a ammeter also so voltmeter and ammeter are actually galvanometers just one resistor is extra resistor is extra be it voltmeter or ammeter let's do the question if you have a galvanometer coil 100 ohms gives full deflection of 1 milliampere when passes through it what is the value of the resistance which can convert this galvanometer into voltmeter giving full scale deflection for 10 volts let's do this let's do this question okay first of all galvanometer of coil resistance 100 ohms okay so rg is 100 ohms obviously you need a series resistance i don't know how much it is full scale when 1 milliampere passes through it so here 1 milliampere is passing through it what is the value of the resistance which can convert it into a voltmeter of 10 volts so maximum voltage that you can measure across the terminals maximum voltage which you can measure across the terminals is basically 10 volts that's what the question says question is find rs guys this is very simple v is ir v is ir voltage is 10 current is 1 milli that means 10 to the power minus 3 resistance is both of them together resistance is both of them together so it will become 10000 ohms now this resistance 
obviously is the sum of two. So it is Rg plus Rs. So Rs will be 10,000 minus Rg. Rg, Rg is basically 100. So it will become 9,900 ohms, which is 9.9 .9 kilo ohms, which is option B, Bombay. Wow, IIT Bombay guys. IIT Bombay. How many of you have been to IIT Bombay campus here? So when I used to stay in hostel, especially during these rainy seasons, you should visit the campus. You will indirectly get motivation for cracking J. Trust me on this. The campus becomes a campus is anyways green, but it becomes extra green. And you will see that IIT Bombay campus, it has a lake, beautiful lake. Okay. And there are nice skyscrapers around, nice five-star hotels, nice luxury buildings around. And the water is full. Sometimes there are crocodiles also in those lakes. You take a beautiful walk, smell the fresh air, smell the, you know, uh, smell the fragrances of the flowers and the trees around. Nobody to disturb. There are hardly any vehicles moving. And you take a walk, your mind is at a next level. And when you enter that, such a campus, even when you are not in IIT right now, and you, you can derive immense amount of motivation. So if you are in Bombay or if you are in Chennai or if you are in, you know, any uh, city which has, an I, which has an IIT, please visit the IIT. You will get immense amount of motivation, my dear students. Okay. So I want you to enjoy all of this. And that will only happen when you clear J mains and J advance. Okay. Somebody is saying, sir, I watched Chichore movie. Very good. Very nice substitute. So how about watching all the IIT lectures also from home? You don't want to do that. No. So watching movie is different. Watch, watching movie also will give you definitely motivation. But going into the campus, it has no comparison. You cannot even think. You will understand when I, when you actually end up going there. Okay. Cool. So that was the last question. There is a DPP below in the description box, which you need to solve. Please solve it ASAP. Also telegram channel, join it so that you get the PDF of today's session. You don't want to miss that. And also the future timetables and updates, right? And if you have enjoyed the class, please put it up in the comments. What you like the best about today's lecture? How much you learned today and if there is nothing that you want to say just put up wp wp it is going to cost you 10 seconds of your time cool smash the like button also subscribe to the channel do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like show your love show your support for the only j english channel in this country cool thank you so much that's all for today you learned a lot right from current parameters to combination of cells and resistors to equivalent circuits and also the measuring instruments and power and Kirchhoff's laws and so many other things. What a fun filled, what a power packed session this was. That's what flash stands for. I'll be meeting you again on Wednesday and Wednesday you're going to have the most predicted paper for the upcoming J mains attempt. And then you're going to meet me again for the PYQ session at nine o'clock. Okay. Meanwhile, other sessions continue. Stay tuned on the channel. Bye bye. Take care. Hasta la vista.